Actually, this is the Reign of Fire Dragon. He's going to be spitting some fire at you. Take a look at the references down here and over there. That's what we're going to be doing, something like that, because we want to have some objects towards the lighting. Haven't actually done that on a bust yet. For all the busts that are painted, I mean, it's not like it's hundreds of them, but I haven't actually done the object source lighting on those yet. Now, here's some of the previous busts. I'm going to break these out. I also got some pictures of them, too. You can see it's along the same size. There's actually three of the Game of Thrones. I think this is Verizian here. Then there's also Drogon. We've got him over here. I'll just show him to you. Again, I got the pictures of him, too. But this gives you a little sense of just about how big they are, the size they are. So there you go. Now the coloration, just the natural colorization of our Reign of Fire Dragon is a little bit more like Drogon here. We can see we did the... Hey, we've got... Now we got some bits and cheering by Armored Wolf. And here we go. Let's just have Opelia's spell brush go. You know, I drink out of that. And also, be sure to check out Armored Wolf on Etsy because there's some really nifty dice bags. And look at this. Speaking of critters, look at him. Look at that wolf looking at you. That is a dice bag right there. It's going to be eventually sewn in. Oh, and there's a Kathy in the house, too. So go check out Armored Wolf on Etsy because, well, and Kathy has one of their very cool Nurgle-themed dice bags. Now we're going to do this object source lighting. We want to have something really fun and juicy. Say like this right here. Some fluorescents, right? These are from Golden. Some golden acrylics right here. And I'll show you some other pieces here that also have some of the object source lighting. Now check this out. You can see the dramatic effect that this has. Hey, there's a Jakob. How's it going? Yes, from Nurgle Dice Bag. I don't have that here to show you. It's in the other room, but I got my dice bag, which I can show you also in a second. So look at this right here. See this thing that's going, driving the camera bonkers over here? That is your fluorescent orange. There's your fluorescent yellow. Now, we also have some of our Reaper colors here. So we got clear red, clear orange. We got clear yellow out there. We also have a few other ones here. We got the whole collection of liners, red, brown, blue, green, the usual. We also have some of our off-white over here, the Maiden Flesh. You'll see a couple of the Pro Acryls that pop up now and again, because these are, unlike the clear and liner paints, these just, like, cover everything. So we're going to bounce back and forth between these. We're also going to use our sponges right here. So typical sort of makeup sponges yes very nice and we've got our craft brushes of course these are our usual number eight rounds but the uh oh oh my god we already have a builder of the pyramid nessie i was going to tell you that there was some new some new things there but yes nessie knows has redeemed the builder of the pyramid at five thousand jet points that means he's been watching for a while i think yeah, well, there's going to be an even bigger one because, well, you know, this has to be the ultimate chat right there. Who knows how many points that's going to be to be part of the FU club. Yes, indeed, that faded ultramarine. But look at the size of our nifty little car. Uh-oh. And armor with also, yes, <clears throat> when you watch that long, you get to be a builder of the pyramid. And we'll, we'll explain what that is, but see a little graphic here. We'll just have Apelius point this out. See that right there, that pyramid? That was the original painting pyramid back in 2013 when I was doing my very first miniature painting tutorials. And yes, object source lighting was part of that. Oh, we have gridlocks. How's it going? Welcome in. And Sky King. Yeah, this is the normal American time. I think tomorrow night's going to be more for our European and Aussie friends. And then Saturday is just going to be sort of like the, remember the cool mini or not? The, uh, the, that long, really long, day-long stream. I think that's what's on, the, on tap for Saturday. Now we got brown liner here. We got red liner here. And I just got, 
heal water here. Uh oh. We have Holt Mini Paint. Thank you so much for the host. And actually, you should be following Holt Mini. You should also be following Nessie Nose and and Yaka. All the folks in here. Just if you want to do your own self shout outs, <laughs> you can do that too. I, I I do not mind you guys doing your own shout outs because it's so much easier for you guys to do those than for me. And they, they were just gonna start out in our usual super messy fashion right here. Super messy. Gigantic freaking brush. Liner paints all over. It's out of control. Or is it is it really out of control? We'll see. And you, we just kind of bounce back and forth between red liner, brown liner, blue liner, and green liner. But that welcome, welcome every. Oh, and it's it's Risden Design and Snickernack definitely do the follow thing uh, on Snickernack. They just I think you guys just did your last stream of the month, right? Because it was no, oh, it was oh, it was the Wednesday stream, yeah. But definitely give Snickernack because that's a twofer. You get two for one on Snickernack. You get basically constant stream for how many hours between you and Yeji there. So definitely, definitely give yourself a follow to Snickernack. Now, let's break out some of ye old sponge here. And the ancient shellbacks, they, they are very familiar with this. They've seen this before. Look at that. What it does is it enhances the... Not just the shading, it also gives it a little bit of a tint, I would say, because we haven't just been using this same color everywhere. You can see how much of this comes off. Oh, look, we can cut the sponges, make them smaller, be more targeted. Oh, it's Ruin 15. Let's see, what's special about the liner paints? They're essentially like the clear paints, but with some, basically some black added. So they have a nice, they're... They're really nice for glazing, like I'm doing here, but yet they still have some intensity to the pigmentation, so that it gives you a little bit more of a color. And later on, and not much, not much later, you'll see what happens when we add some of these lighter colors to the liner paints. You just get a really nice, basically, a whole bunch of grays. <laughs> Five or six hours in a row. Yep, because well, geez. You guys, it almost seemed like about eight or nine hours last night, <clears throat> sorry, between the two of you, because I think you were still going by at least three or four or something like that. So yes, indeed. And Orchris Gaming also, yes, <clears throat> give give them a follow as well. Uh, oh, and there you go. Yeah, do do your own shelf, shelf, self shout outs. That is always handy. And Kathy just finished her stream. Yeah, just uh, just an hour ago. They're they're actually really like Kathy says they're thinner, which also makes them really good for freehand. Let's say you want to do a oh, purity seal, something along that line. They're really handy for that. So you can see how much we've been able to take off here. Oh, wow! Anthro Andrew, also another builder of the pyramid. Wow. Let's see, can we break the 8.5 hour record? That might happen on Saturday because I'm going to try and get an even earlier start than the other Saturday when we did this. Oh, is that a couple weeks ago, right, for the Cool Mini Expo thing? So that is what we're going to try and do is top that. Uh, let's see, I, I'm just looking, making sure I'm not uh, missing anything. Yeah, Kathy still has the day shift, but we just thought... Here on Thursday, because Friday, Kathy's going to be catching the Pyro Club crew doing their D&D &D thing. So we figured, save the bandwidth. That's that's when I'll do the late night stream on Friday. That starts probably around 2.30ish or so central time here. Alright, so we've got our preliminary glazes in place. Now we also want to do our object source lighting, right? And this is the first time I've done sort of an off-camera object source lighting, because normally 
there is a very obvious source for it like this all of our flaming skulls over here right actually this is a whole series of videos on YouTube I think there yeah there's three of them there's painting the base and then two on painting the Hydra there but now that's one again you can see where the object source lighting comes from here it's gonna be a little bit different it's gonna be coming from off-camera which is you see it a lot now on busts geez I see it all the freaking time now let's start it sooner rather than later and by sooner I mean like right now and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some of our some of our red clear red paint from Raper a little bit of our fluorescence and let's get going here with it uh, let's see I missed the paints is there fluorescent orange the golden flits the it is this so this is all gonna be acrylics for today tomorrow will or you know, tomorrow might be a mix too, but here's the oil fluorescence, but look at that, it still does the same thing. Look at what this did the camera. Is that not cool or what? Nasty House Studios also around. Let's see. Yeah, so this one, I just wanted to have this one dry by the end of the evening. So that's why this one's going to be an acrylics, and we are going to just, boom, we're starting right away here. We are not going to sit there and paint all this stuff only to realize oh yeah well I kinda need to just cover everything that I painted with all this source lighting because we used to do that we used to sit there paint away merrily and go oh yeah could have saved myself a whole bunch of time there because guess what that gets covered by object source lighting the other reason too to start this off as soon as possible it's to avoid that phenomenon where you your light is darker than what you're supposed to be illuminating and here's looking at you every single Gandalf or Sauron with a glowing staff that I've ever seen because people think well their robe is white which then means they paint the robe white and their glow is quite interesting because it's darker than the white robe instead of maybe I don't know putting some shadows on the white robe around the object source lighting they just kind of hit it with that blue and well hilarity ensues we'll just go with that but you can see straight away we're starting to see all the areas that we're not gonna have to mess around with too much just by virtue of getting some of this in place and I can almost do a little bit of quick blending with my hands here still working with this big old brush we're also gonna have to get some light on this I'm looking around here uh, let's see uh, Kathy I should have guessed which is working on the wet palette brain yeah it's well it's been hello little hobbits spark my ganja <laughs> thank you so much for the follow Jonas Calhoun Gandalf appreciates that it's been a wee bit of a troublesome 24 hours which is like the understatement of the last 10,000 years and definitely man that is just there there is no there's no easy way there's no even hard way to do that but you can see we're just here's a little oh look there's a little black heart logo right there we'll just here let's pop a little bit of something on that it's not really a dry brush you can see there's plenty of paint on the brush I'm just doing that to show you the translucency of the fluorescence and also the clears they both have a certain measure of transparency to them which is something that I really like it's something that maybe you got to get used to oh we have a pigeon Rain of Fire, well, definitely, this is actually one of the Rain of Fire dragons here. We've got the reference pictures down on either side. It was one of the few movies I've ever really gotten to see in, like, in the last 10 some odd years or whatever. So when we kind of liked it, it didn't really take itself seriously. We liked the dragons. It was kind of a fun idea for what the dragons could do. 
I mean, you know, rooting for the dragons, but of course the dragons lose all the time. Huge bummer right there. And and of course, well, I've, I don't know. Is it too soon for spoilers? I don't know. Was that movie about 15 years ago? There's Drax in the house and all day classics. Definitely give Drax a follow unless uh, you want to do your own little self shout out there because we've been doing that tonight. Self shout outs. You can shout at yourself or shout about yourself. One or the other or both. It don't matter. And just so folks know that are coming in, we are going with acrylics here. And we are using, yes, we are using fluorescent paints. And we are building up at least some form of light on this thing as soon as we can. We are not screwing around, painting a bunch of other stuff first. Like I said, if anything else, it's going to save you a bunch of time. Because th there's been other projects where I said, oh, yeah, yeah, I could have saved myself 20 minutes there, 30 minutes there, because it's all just covered up by object source lighting anyways. So exactly what was the reason for me painting that cloak or that whatever? Uh, not much. Uh, this, yeah, you can shout yourself out, but you must keep your hands above the table at all times so we can see them. That's the rule. It always was in school. And you can see now this starts to wander a bit more towards a little bit lighter here. There was a part of me that was thinking, oh man, I should maybe do the whatever that is, that liquid that comes out of there. They, I think is it in one of my references? Yeah, you can see it in the reference on the left. And see how that's sort of kind of dribbling out of his mouth there? That was kind of neat. So basically, it was it was sort of like uh, lighter fluid, basically. They just kind of sprayed stuff, and then somehow they could light that spray on fire, and things started to glow. Yeah, let's keep going here with our... Again, not going to do that here. That's, I guess, the other weird thing I've seen people do with object source lighting is light things that Hello, really... Hello, little hobbit. Spark my ganja. Hey, speaking of Gandalf, he welcomes in the original Blappy. Thank you so much for the follow. I had just... <laughs> Rizzum says no one has time for the rules. Oh, and Zen, for one, has finished a diorama. I, I hopefully... Oh, and there's uh, Jonas Kellen. Thank you so much again. I'm just looking, making sure I'm... Oh, it's no big deal. We're just getting into this. We're just starting here. We have only begun to light. Quite literally. Now, this is the wild thing about... I go in the acrylics here because... That's still sort of covered, even though... It's super translucent. Now, we're gonna... I'm gonna hit the... Stand here, or the plinth, or whatever you want to call that... Eventually, again... But I just want, I want that to dry a touch. And as soon as I start to add in things like, oh, I don't know, a little bit of this clear yellow, I'll compensate with a touch of the, that's the fluorescent yellow. Let's start to bring this up just a bit here. Just mapping this out. That's all it is. Now, on the top side of him, and I'll be bringing back that vampire. I think it was a vampire lord. That was by Artisan Guild. You, you can really enhance your object source lighting, not so much by how bright you make this, by how dark you make your original surface that's being lit, and just how grayed down or muted that color is. And I'll show you the vamp in a Again, just a second here. Just a sec, Sue. If you check him out. So you got actually there's some greens in here in his skin tone. You got blues in here, grays, right? Let us go to our color killer here and zoink. We make it black and white. We make it all black and white. 
can still see the glow there. You can still see all the shading, but now you don't have that difference in the, the saturation and the cool versus warm. So we bring the color back. That changes everything. So here we go. You bring the color back. Now you can see the greens here, especially on the top of his head. You start to see some of those blues in there. And then you see just how intense those oranges are. We did the same thing on this guy here with the giant Cheeto. So those two are painted. Actually, this one was painted on a YouTube Live. I think even the Vampire Lord, too, he was also painted on a YouTube Live. Again, all of this, I just consider this essentially a base coat. It's just a base coat. We're not worried about any kind of actual texture here. I just want to see how light should this be. Because if the highlights on the dragon, who's kind of a really dark color to begin with, if those are going to end up being lighter than this illumination here, well, you're not going to have much in the way of illumination. Hello, little hobbit. Spark my ganja. Now, speaking of lighting things on fire, Nasty House has also followed. Thank you so much for the follow. Actually, what's really weird is that maybe a minute and a half before I started the stream tonight, we, we surpassed a thousand followers. So I also want to say thank you very much for all the follows. I did not think the channel would reach that point quite this soon, as in six weeks or so. So the follows are most definitely appreciated. They obviously make a difference. They make a difference because we got people here. Oh, let's see. Oh, Jonas has a entry now. You're doing that with the color. Or so much value, the black and white. Yeah, it's that's something that you can do just with your figure like with your phone. And it's not a bad little exercise to do with your phone, and then you see just how much light and dark do you have? And how much color contrast do you have? Because you could see that most of the contrast on that vampire, that was color contrast. Because his skin, they wanted his skin a light gray. But I still had to have lighting on that. And that's where the, the gray was not just cooler, but it was also more toned down. And that's what allowed for that, that little extra kick of contrast that when you take the color away, well, now you lose the color contrast. Because everybody's always, I'm sure, everyone in the room, when they ask somebody about, oh, what is it, their, their critique thing, right? And they say, what can I do? You'll, you'll hear, make it pop, right? There's that. And, and then you'll hear, what's the other one? Oh, more contrast. What the heck do they mean by more contrast? Do they mean make it lighter here, darker there? What do they mean by all that? Hopefully just what I did there shows you a little something more about contrast and what's possible with the contrast instead of kind of the usual thing where you're just making it lighter or darker. Yeah, it's just... Uh, now, of course, uh, part of it is maybe because that's the 12th person that has asked them in the last hour and they kind of just don't know what else to say. So there's, there's that. I, I've been in that too. But there, there's more. You can go beyond just the make it pop, more contrast. You could at least say, look, have some, have some more warm colors to contrast. You got a, you got a red cloak. How's about using dark greens and the recesses of your red cloak instead of just darker reds? You do that. Guess what? You got pop. Not going to make a darn bit of difference as far as how light or dark it is. But the eye is going to see that green in the cloak there. It's not going to actually say, look, there's green in the cloak. It's just going to say, wow, that, that cloak has some, and the shadow area is there. There's a little more going on. There's something else going on in those shadows. And actually have, well, we'll be doing that here too. We'll certainly be doing that on this guy. Where did you go, Jamie? Here it is. So there's another one. So see how we got the purples there in the folds of that cloak? 
And then if you remember here, this is done on a stream not long ago, you can see how that's greenish in there. But when you just look at the figure, you say, oh, yeah, he's got a red cloak. Until you look and you say, wait a minute, that's green in there. That's not just red. So that's what I'm talking about. Wait a minute, I'm seeing, what about pepperoni? Oh, wait a minute. Who, who's talking about pizza here? I, I want pizza. I want pizza and I want ice cream. And, and magic shell. And pizza. I want a five cheese, five meat pizza. That is what I desire. Pepperonis can certainly be on there. Let's see. Sausage. Maybe another kind of pepperonis. More sausage. More kind of pepperonis. Other stuff that's meat. And more cheeses. Buffalo chicken pizza. I think, uh, oh yeah, I remember the, the Mexican themed pizza where it was chorizo for the sausage and it was more of a cornbread crust and definitely some salsa placed in there. Uh, the beef in the hole is in the house. Let's see. You know, I'll go to throw that. Kathy likes a good ribeye too. Yeah. That is for sure. I think uh, selections of meat here and, and other sort of things are just going to, well, kind of everywhere are going to maybe be, I don't want to say short supply, but maybe a reduced selection for a while. So you can see we're starting to build this up more. We haven't even messed with this yet, but we're starting to get some solid. Hey, well, we got Go Blackheart in the house. Won't be able to stick around. Got 200 more miles to get kept. Oh, for the Wano Manifest Model Contest. So, yeah, so Go Blackheart, that is that is your purveyor of all things Blackheart. Definitely go check out the Blackheart website and go buy, well, go buy half-size busts because that's what's coming next. This is the tiny bust. This is the tiny bust because, here, I'm going to show you this. So this one, that was a half-life-size bust, and that was painted a couple years ago at Gen Con. Well, there is another bust of that size, and it's a different one. It's the Caracciola, I think, is that one. So that is what's coming up the rest of this weekend. Definitely give the, oh, yeah, the, the shout-out to the Gold Blackheart. Cornbread crust is where it's at. Yeah, that does really sound yummy. Meat sweats pizza. I can deal with that. Just like I can deal with the brain freeze ice cream thing. Not that there's much to freeze. Not much to freeze whatsoever. So we're starting to, we're starting to build this up a touch. And look at this, we're nowhere near the lightest light. And by nowhere near, I mean like nowhere near. I'm going to keep this, one of the reasons I keep adding the yellow in there, that's the fluorescent yellow, by the way, is because when as soon as you start to add something that's a little bit more towards the white, well, that fluorescent orange starts turning pink. And there's just one way to keep it from doing that. And that's by adding some of the yellow and... Sure enough, the fluorescent yellow is mighty handy. That'll keep the pinks away. That will certainly keep the pinks away. Yeah, I am not worried about any kind of shapes here. I'm just trying to figure out how light should this be. How light do these guys get? Okay, we're going to shade them over the top of this later on. We're what, basically 25 minutes into this thing for all intents and purposes? Uh, we'll be we'll be going here for at least three hours or so. You can see how that already starts to bring things out. And again, the camera the camera even has trouble just keeping track of the fluorescent paints because it is just so intense. Got to be working fast. Got to work fast. Can't be screwing around, getting bogged down in details. Now, part of it is, we have a jinx dart in the house. Hey there. 
Oh, you got definitely the the floral paints. They're really helpful for just. Well, you know, you've seen me using them in the non-metallic stuff too. Oh yeah, well, and the lightsabers would not hurt either. Those would not hurt either. So hopefully, uh, I also give uh, Jinx Start a follow there. She can also do a little self shout out. We're we're also doing that. People are shouting themselves out. Go there for lots of good skelly tones, as we kind of call those things here. Lots of skulls. Skully goodness. Hello, little hobbit. Spark my ganja. <laughs> Thank you so much for the follow, Reverend Shiz. Gandalf also approves. Gandalf appreciates it. Well, I guess we're really going to spark his ganja here with the object source lighting on our Reign of Fire dragon. I don't think they had... I don't think they actually gave him any names. There was just kind of the big bad dragon or whatever. Kind of the hero of the story. Who basically kind of uh, fried the other... Uh, he fried a few of the heroes successfully. Here, let's get some more of our lights down here. Now that we've kind of established what we want to do there, again, I'm not going to worry too much about this because my hand's just going to wipe away that paint. But let's start to fool around up here now. And start to mess around there too. Now that's going to be our cooler colors, remember? Which we've got a plenty over here. So we'll go back to our filbert shape on this. Oh, what the heck. Let's just grab some blue liner here. Let's grab a little bit of that Maiden Flesh and see that nifty little kind of bluish gray that we get out of this here. Well, that's handy. Let's start to go with our cooler colors. You see, it's not much difference as far as light and dark. The primer, the usual Badger Steiner res. Usual Steiner res. You can see the process is pretty similar to what we did with the fire side of things, except Except we're going in the opposite direction. We're going with cooler, grayed down colors. Sticking with the filbert brush. The other thing this will do is help me find some of the nifty little texture that's sitting around in here. And now that I've got my, at least some of the object source lighting in place, now I know just how light I can get over here. With the highlights as we do them with the invisible air quotes that nobody can see because both of my hands are doing this. I don't know, maybe I'm going to have to get myself one of those stream decks or whatever, one of the, uh, was it the Elgato steam stream deck or something like that and be able to press a button and then air quotes will show up on screen. Yeah, let's not only go with the blue. I'm going to get a little bit of the red liner in here, too. And then we're going to be doing some glazes into this. We sort of uh, start in the middle, work our way lighter, then work our way backwards. We used to, in the beginning, in the beginning, we used to do the whole thing where we would start out with the black primer and you layer endlessly lighter colors 75 years later you got half a miniature painted and then you realize oh yeah well I didn't really have anything to compare that to so that color is all wrong oh is Brentwood in the house let's see uh, got the scale let's see still debating I should get scale 75 uh, let, let's just say that the only fluorescent paints outside of the golden ones that I've been using here are the Vallejo ones. I've tried other fluorescent paints, and uh, there's a reason why I don't use them. But <laughs> we'll, we'll put it that way. I have tried other fluorescents, and there is a reason why you don't see them on the palette, because... 
didn't pass the tests. The I did not expect the golden fluorescents to pass the tests. I'd, it's actually a while before they even got the test to begin with. And then once they got that test and they didn't just pass the test, they completely destroyed the test. And I said, okay, all right, something we got to do here. Now, again, we're using the maiden flesh with the blue liner. That's giving us a little bit of a, I don't want to say a pinkish twist to our dark blue, but sort of. Now here, on the opposite side of things, we're making this a little bit lighter than it will be eventually because I want to be able to glaze back in here. And I have to compensate for the future glaze. Just like weathering's like a chess match. Everything's a chess match. Miniature painting in itself. It's all just a chess match. It's you versus the miniature. Locked in a contest of wills. Who will survive? Will it be you or the miniature? Uh, let's see. War Colors has a set. To, I, I don't think I've ever worked with any War Colors stuff. Maybe... At some point, I will. Oh, I'm just looking here at the chat. Yeah, she, I know. What Wasn't it maybe a year-ish ago that she got one? Or maybe it was about eight months ago she got one. I know there's a new version of the Stream Deck out there. I, I guess it's the same amount of buttons, but the buttons are bigger. It's really not hugely different feature-wise. It's just bigger, and it's... The stand is better, I guess. It's easier to orient it and mount it and do all that kind of stuff. Uh, let's see. Golden is cool. Bought those for a pin for my daughter. Let's see. Uh, conventional, but sometimes that's the best. Uh, original Blappy. This is amazing to me. You never painted anything like it. Learning so much. Well, I, I really do hope that the inspiration thing, that's that's important. Because so many, geez, so many people I've seen, they they just get frustrated with miniature painting. It's supposed to be the thing that's fun for them. And then it becomes not fun. And, and nobody wants to do things that aren't fun. I mean, that's just, that's, that's every person ever. And that's completely logical. So then you just don't paint anymore. Or you just find reasons. There's always other things that have to be done anyways. Let's see, now we start to bring this even down on the opposite side where our light is here. Still not a dry brush because you can see there's plenty of paint there. It's just a big old brush with those soft bristles. Let's start to do something here on the interior. And for as dark as this is, I mean, look at how dark this is here. But in the interior, it looks light just because we've successfully managed to get a lot of dark in there. Lots of dark in there. Let's keep going here with our... Again, this is red liner. This is what I like about it. It's muted, but also it still has a lot of pigment. It's weird. It's this weird combination of muted color that's also intense. If that makes any sense at all. Probably so not. We all. Techno Cat, thank you so much for the sub. That is appreciated. Here, let's get, we got to get the, out of the pyramid cup. Yes, that's, that's now the, it's the pyramid cup now. And there should be, yeah, I'm going to, I'm still looking into the whole, was it the moderator thing there? So that people can have their moderator badges and all that sort of stuff. I may try to do that before Saturday's what's supposed to be a very long stream. So that could help a whole bunch to have some moderators doing that. And see, now we're going to go to our... Where's our Drogon? Here. I used a very similar set of colors on him. And you can see we've you got some of the, the red liner that's mixed with the maggot white and the maiden flesh there you got some of the blue liner that's the blues that you see in there actually the tan color that's the sepia liner 
So you can see we're starting to get very similar here between the two. Difference is going to be in our object source lighting. Now I also have to decide, am I going to do some of that in here too? Let's see if we're going to do something like that. So, where's my, here we go, a little red liner into this here. Take some of that away. And the advantage is, again, that it is relatively translucent. I'm going to take even more of that away. So it's not going to be a dry brush. It's just going to be, I just call it a dry glaze. Had to call it something. Didn't know what the heck else to call it. But there. So again, a little bit of the lighting here on the underside of his mouth, I think, is appropriate. Now, I've been seeing this an awful lot on busts lately. The object source, basically, off-camera object source lighting on busts. Uh, you can see it's a nifty thing to do. It's really fun. I think we'll get some of that here, too. Yeah, we'll pop some of that right there. I think we need to get some of that here. Now if I've got one of my little flashlights on, ah ha ha. Now, this one is blue, but you can see, if I turn off this light, yeah. This is one way to say, okay, what is actually gonna get hit by that light? Now I have a red one, but I can see the, the upper lid there. Is ah uh, yeah I can okay look at that so it does get the inside of his mouth so that's handy to know yes indeed so we were we're on the right path there yeah these well the 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 price is just it's hard to beat what is it I think on average somewhere between twenty five to thirty five dollars for something of this size and you know there's other really nifty ones too so. This is one that I actually painted in oils, and I have another one of these that I will also be painting in oils on a future stream. And we got Brent Wood doing the cheers. Thank you so much. And that means Polly's is gonna he's gonna just wait for stuff to fall right there. It's kind of like a drinking game, just for bits. So thank you so much for the cheers. It is appreciated. Now, how's about some more of this orange and red? I'm going to start to backfill a little bit in here, too. Now that I know there is a little bit more of our light that can hit up here, I'm going to do that. The other thing, too, with the fluorescence, because they are so transparent, as you can, just like we're doing here, we're going a little bit lighter. You can actually go lighter than you need to and then sort of backfill it. And here we're kind of glazing over our orange there a bit. Now once I get into more detailed things, I'll also zoom in a bit. I think I've got this on maximum zoom out right now. And when it comes to when we start doing stuff on the eyes and other detailed things, we'll zoom back in again. But for right now, I just want to stay focused on What's important, and that is working across the whole darn thing at the same time. We're not getting bogged down in one little bit. See, we, we jump back into our object source lighting again. You know, maybe here I start to figure out, okay, what's, what's going to happen on, the, on these rocks here? Again, I'm not going to get too involved with it because my hand's going to be wiping away a good portion of that stuff. But for now, let's see what we got going here. It, it'll help me figure out what level of lighter, how much I should subdue this or bring it up on the dragon itself. And none of this is anywhere near the lightest it can go. I mean, like, not even close. You know, just get, get we're focused on the, you know, these lower edges of the rocks here. I'm going to get back into here, too. I'm going to start to bring in some of my red liner and clear red. And now look at this. So that was where some of the original 
glaze hadn't dried yet. I was just waiting for it to, and now, look at this, I can go back in here. Let me start to fill in some of this. Just have to be willing to endure that initial shock of, ooh, man, that doesn't look so hot. It doesn't look like much of anything. It, it's kind of the, <laughs> it's the universal thing. But it really does help. It's not just speed. It's accuracy. Because I can, see, by having what's the, what's my lighter color here, now I know just what I can do here with this darker version of my red. Because if I started with this and I just kept endlessly highlighting lighter, 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 wouldn't really know just how light to go. Oh, and then there's there's also areas like this where I didn't even see this stuff back here. So, and here we'll start to, again, red liner into the clear red. I'll keep a touch of my fluorescent in there. Just a touch of it. Oh, Metagames TV is also here too. We are doing, oh, and Numskull, the Death Elemental, that's going to be uh, next week because this is, we're doing this for Wana Fest here. So this whole weekend is going to be all Blackheart busts. But yes, I do have the Death Elemental all set to go. And that will just, uh, well, we'll see how, it'll be interesting to see how many streams that'll take, because some parts I'll just have to let dry. It's, it's not like you couldn't paint them all in one stream, but I would like to have parts of them dry. Because otherwise I would just have to kind of do it in acrylic to be able to finish it all in one stream. Be a very long stream at that. So again, we're just we're glazing things down here. We went lighter, right? Remember, I told you we we're going to work towards the lighter side and then start to work back down again, and then we're going to work back towards the light again after that. This is where we're going to start to feel our way through some of the lighter tones here on our dragon. Let's see how light we want to go with some of this stuff. All right, that's relatively light there. Let's see what we want to do with his eyes here. So I think we can actually start to do a similar thing now with this part of him that we've been doing with our object source lighting. We can start to think about, start to think about some of the same, like that darker red that we've been adding in here. And we're going to start to do that to our, especially back here. I'm always tempted to try and do these, oh gosh, what the heck would they be? I just keep thinking of them as fins. Maybe have those be somewhat semi-translucent, almost like a, a membrane type of thing. Oh, let's see if we can't. Go with a bit more of a yellow here. So this now is the first time we've really brought in any of the pro acryls here. Oh, warmonger in the house. That's good. Oh, about uh, tea. Yeah, today this is acrylics. Now tomorrow, or for sure Saturday, is going to be oils because that's going to be a gigantic half-size bust, and you really can't get a better candidate for oils than something like that. So there will most definitely be oils this weekend here. It, it might start up on Friday, but I'm thinking Saturday. I think what I'll do on Friday is some of the acrylic work, because it's so freaking huge, that what I'll do is on Friday do some of the acrylic stuff, and then, like, basically rest it on top of the acrylic stuff, which will be, like, the back and other areas. So that the, the actual face of it, and again, go look up at the, the Blackheart Models site. It's the Caracil... Well, there's not that many half-size busts. Just look at the half-size bust page, and that'll tell you. You'll, you'll see it. I'm going to give that eye a little touch of 
this yellow here. Oh, what are we doing on these teeth? I'm going to make them a little bit more. Basically just taking that brown liner, some of the clear yellow here. Lots of little teeth. To, now these, yeah, those are going to have to be more along the lines of red anyway. I'm just going to see what we got here on the lower jaw. Again, more along the lines of reds here. Where else do we need? I guess I have to decide, do I want that to be on the lighter side of things or darker? And our, when I start doing the glazes, that's also going to fill me in. The tongue. Let's see what we can do here. Purple wise. So we're going to take some of this red here. Almost makes it like a bit of a pink. And then, hmm, some green. This is actually green liner. We're mixing it with our red to get sort of a grayed down purple. Like that. Oh, I won't really do too much with the interior of the mouth here because you can't really see it. Let's go a bit lighter on that too and maybe touch more of the clear red. So green and red, see, they, they sort of gray it down, right? Didn't really turn brown, it almost turned more of a purple color. So it's the other thing too is I think a lot of people just assume, well, Red and green make brown. They sort of do. Kind of depends on the ratio, and it kind of depends on what green and red you're working with. That green has an awful lot of blue in it, hence the reason why it kind of turned purple instead of brown. Uh, let's see. More among us, uh, I mentioned there was fluorescent oils. I never heard of that, so I researched well, that's okay, because that is not the only paint that you are using, first of all. And second of all, your miniatures don't sit there out in the sun. They probably sit in a case in your house, not hanging on the wall. So any kind of oil paint, well, they're judging the light fatness, fastness by that never being put away in a case or a closet or anything like that. So because I used Dr. Martin's dyes 25 years ago on paintings and it was supposed to not last very long. It wasn't light fast, but because those paintings stayed in a closet for 25 years and were never hung, actually even some of the ones that I did hang, because they weren't in, exposed to direct sunlight, those are just as fine today as they were 25 years ago. So I would not worry about that one bit again unless you've got your miniatures sitting out in the sun when you're not using them then that might be an issue but that also might be an issue with them melting as well because we've had that happen to people <laughs> we've had people stuff melt yeah like the fine cast stuff when the gw they, they displayed that up in the window of the store and all of a sudden, their fine casts was more like fine puddles. And I'm even taking some of that pink further out here. Further out this way. There's some more even. I just don't care. I really don't care. There's going to be glazes over this anyhow. Doesn't really matter to me. I just want to get some lighter colors in here. And I'm going to now, speaking of lighter colors, this is actually your, your Pro Acryl stuff here. So that's going to cover that much more. Uh, nah, not so much on those teeth there. How's about up here? Just a, a few of these spots. He's really got some wrinkly skin here. So different than the other ones like the Drogon and the Vizirian. Or is much more spiky. This is more almost leathery skin like here. And he's really got the 
Got that furrowed brow going, that's for sure. Now, let's see, I have people need more black card, black card stuff in their lives. Let's see, uh, Pigeon didn't realize I needed a Ghidorah bust in my life until I headed to the Black Hawk site. Oh, yes, Black Hawk site. <laughs> Uh, let's see. <laughs> yes, be one of us. Be one of the kind that has tons of black heart models, but there's lots of dinosaurs. There's lots of very nifty busts on the black heart site. I painted other ones too. I've painted the Morticia bust. Actually, that video is on my YouTube channel. What else? There was also the, oh, the Geronimo bust. There was, well, the species bust. We're doing another species bust soon. Here, let's get some some light on this side, too, just while I'm thinking about it. All right, so we've started to, again, we're working lighter than we need to because we're going to go back in with some glazing. Oh, right about now. Now is not a bad time. Uh, Josh asks, what color are you going to do for the eye? Uh, at this point, no idea. I have no clue. It kind of depends what happens with the object source lighting and with some of these glazes that we're doing right now. That's the other reason why I kind of advocate this method because you can basically sort of feel your way around. You do not have any specific plan or anything like that, even with the reference here. And now we can, you know, we're starting to glaze back in. I'm going to maybe take some of this green over here. We'll get some nice rich darks in here. We're going to spread some of this around. And I always have sponges handy too, if I want to do that. And it's not always super watery glazes either. This one's a little less water. Remember the stuff we were doing here on the underside? That was not super watery. I think I'm also going to have this be darker. Something tells me that should be a bit darker. Yeah. Like that. Then maybe a little bit of water. Hello, little hobbits. Spark my ganja. As Gandalf welcomes in Bazella. Basil. Bazala. I'm just going to go with that. Basla. I'm going to go with Basla. Here's about some more of our. Again, that's the red liner down in there. Not forgetting my sponges. And we're doing basically sort of a almost like a red glaze over some of those bluish colors. Right, so we can we're gonna go back in and we'll I don't want to call it highlighting necessarily, but we'll we'll go back into some mid tones on some things here. Let's start to play around with some of this green liner here, and that's gonna go right there. By the eye, some of the blue liner over here. Take my brush here, and I'm just going to use that. Don't always have to use the sponges to take the paint away. You can see the difference there. It was just a quick little glaze, that's all. You can even let that blend itself a bit here. Let's take some of this red. And then we'll let those two areas just kind of mix together like you do. I might even have that cross over the eye there a little bit. Yeah, why not? Gives that eye a little bit of shade. Again, something more than on the other side. We're going to go back to our blue over here. Let's see how... Balls, let's see. Balsacious. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, Balsacious. It is appreciated. I've been saving this thing, quite literally, for just a special occasion for a long, long, long time. 
because uh, I painted the other ones on YouTube Live, and we'll we'll show you those in a second. You can still watch those, of course. See now some of the little scaly texture starts to show up. So here is the Drogon bust. Again, this one painted on a YouTube Live. We're using a lot of the same colors that we used on this guy. Oh, Oliver Ghost in the house. Oh, uh, let's see. Numsko asks, have you done a Frazetta color mixed with your oils? I've done a whole bunch of miniatures with the oils, and we've definitely had Frazetta-like moments. So I'm going to grab oh, some of these guys that were painted with the oils. So you can see you got a lot of the greenish skin tone working in there. So the, the oils are just kind of natural for it. Let's see, I think we've got some other ones here too. How's about these guys? Yeah, a couple of them right here. So again, you can see some of that, some of the greens and the pinks and all that sort of frizzetta y like colors. And, well, other things that I've done with the oils too. Oh, well, thank you very much, Oliver Ghost. It is appreciated. Now, look at this handy little sponge. Boom. Right there. Let's take care of some more darks right here. And just this is the nice thing about these craft brushes. You can see I'm really beating the you know what out of this brush. And it just says, yeah, right, bring bring it on. Bring it on. I don't care. I don't care. Let's do the same thing on this side that we did on the other side. Here's some of that green again. We'll let that blend in here. I'm just going to go right over the eye with that. And then we've got some of our red over here. And those two are just kind of kind of play together. Same thing down in this little recessed area here. Just have to be willing to do the, the messy stuff first. Let it be messy, and then you can work finer from there. There's a little bit of brown liner in with the blue. Right over the top of this again. Sponge. Take some away. It uh, gives us a little bit of a tint there. And because we've been working on the darker areas and just kind of getting a hint for how dark that's going to be, that means now we can maybe go back to some of our object source lighting. And this is where we can maybe you know, start to think about smaller brushes. Let's get some of our fluorescent yellow in here. Oh, we done got ourselves some cheers from Sarge. How are you doing, Sarge? Here, let's... He's going to wait for them bits to fall, and then he's, he's going to... What spell brush is going to eat those right out of the cup there? I suppose in not too long from now, I'm going to do the old black and white thing again. Here, let's get some of the... This is a little touch of the Pro Acryl in there now. Because now I want it to start to cover a little bit, but that means i got to get some of the... Fluorescent yellow in there to keep it from getting too pink. And now we can start to think about, okay, got these scales that are really sticking out here. We got this texture here. So start to think about, okay, what is the lightest light going to be? Where is that going to be? Uh, Balzacious, no, we are not using any oils today. That's going to be probably Saturday where we're going to be using the oils on a very large bust so that we can do all kinds of fun blending and mixing things with that. If you're going to use the oils and or the acrylics, you start with the acrylics. Well, they don't take long to dry. Then you can use the oils over them. But if you're going to use acrylics over oils, you definitely want to let the oils dry first. But obviously acrylics dry fast enough to where you could paint for... 
Hey, Brush for Hire. Thank you for the host. And you can do a little... We're doing self-shoutouts here. So you can shout out yourself, but definitely give Brush for Hire a follow. So actually, oh, geez, Brush for Hire, you, you, you met your... I know you were trying to get to your 1,000 follower goal. That was a week or two ago. I'm sure you've gotten past that, hopefully, because... Twitch was being weird, <laughs> and you'd wake up all of a sudden. It's like, wait a minute, where'd those followers go? It was like they ran away or something, or they were taken prisoner and hauled away. Now there's all kinds of little. I can see it here on on this texture down here. Lots of little tiny scales here, and then we've got these guys. Let's go. Let's go into here and hit some of these. And not all of the shading, as far as the darker shading, that doesn't all have to happen in glazes either. That can also be done kind of like what we were doing here, where it was really more just paint as opposed to a kind of that watery glaze that you think about. And even these, nowhere near the lightest we can go. We can still go so much lighter here. And for the primer on this, let's see. The original pop asked what paints he's using. It's pretty simple. It is the golden acrylic fluorescence. We've got our one pro acryl out here. We've got a few of the Reaper clears, and we've got a few of the Reaper liners, and that is it. No, oh, well, thanks, Nessie, <laughs> and also thank you, Warmonger. It's appreciated. Now, what I have been able to do, I've been successful in sort of taking the footage from these live sessions and sort of remastering it and putting that on YouTube. So eventually this will also be on YouTube kind of from start to finish. Of course, we'll have all of your fine chats on here too. There we go. Now hopefully, I don't know what happens with the channel point reward things where it's a uh, it's the little emoticons. I don't know what happens if you can claim those and use them or whatever. I just, I made them today. And we'll see if those actually show up or not. Because I know there was the, well, we have a couple of builders of the pyramids out there. Yes, we do. All right, this also needs some of our, needs some of our lighting here. So let's hit that. Now, Technocat also is a builder of the pyramid. You spend enough time in this chat, well, you get you get affected in many ways. You are transformed in ways you can't possibly imagine. <laughs> yes, indeed. You're never quite the same again after you've been in Wappleville for too long. You are transformed, never to be the same again. That's it. You end up buying oil paints. You end up with a whole bunch of... Well, not a whole bunch. You end up with some oil paints, and then you end up having so much fun mixing paints and blending paints because that's, like, super fun. Now, let's see if we can't get ourselves some more... And here we're going to take the blue liner, the brown liner, mix them together to make something that's a little bit more like a black, but black with a purpose. And now we start to get some nice rich darks in here. Again, this is not going to be very glazy. It's going to be almost more opaque than anything else. Again, it doesn't always have to be a glaze, or it can be a little bit more of a targeted glaze like that. Yeah, let's get some of this down into these crevices like such. 
home here to get me a little bit more targeted with that. Eventually it does start to reach a stage where it's a little less hectic. A little less with the paint flying all over the place. And this is a this is a cotton right here. It's also a synthetic. Nice thing is having this long liner brush means it holds a whole bunch of paint, a whole bunch of pigment and liquid, but has that nice tip on there. But also lets me do see some quick little spot glazes like that. Let's do another one up here. And as we just keep focusing in on this, we start to get more of our definition between our, our brightest brights and darkest darks. And then we can go back in, do some more fun middle tone type things. You can also do little things like this. You know, let's get some of that red liner in here. I'm going to make that even darker. Make it even darker. There we go. There, a little touch of our deeper reds in here. The same thing here. Don't be afraid to use, don't be afraid to give your miniature the finger. That's what we always say here. Now, ah, Warmonger loves the oil. Yes, there is just, the oils are it's like sitting in a lawn chair you know the naked eating cheetos part is optional i always select that part but they are just so chill i mean just by comparison they're so relaxing so here you see we don't have all those nifty actual darks that we started to work into those areas and then wait a minute wait a minute oh here it comes out comes the faded ultramarine Yes, indeed. That's what we can do here with this. I mean, it just it's going to put itself on the palette anyway. I mean, if I didn't put it out there, it would just end up out there by itself. Because it's just that powerful. And that is going to... Yeah, there we go. That's it. That's going to be a nifty little, again, difference from all of the intensity of the reds the oranges we can start to bring out some of these there's so many of these little teeny tiny scales right here Let's bring some of these out by his eye we can mix that with some of our blue here get sort of a a grayish tone but one that's a little bit different. I oh, can't call myself an oil painter, just in three. Oh, an oil tester. Well, it's it has to start somewhere. I'll never forget. Now, of course, my initial test, since it was for it was a real slightly different purpose, that was 20 winter Americans for bolt action. That was my initial test for oils to see what they could do. And it really, boy, did that go. That went a lot better than I could have expected. Yeah, let's work in some of our, a little bit of our faded ultramarine up here too. Oh, let's see, Sneaker Nax is a, a burgundy wine. Yeah, well, Kathy has her favorites too. Is there a brush, uh, brush fire? Yeah. Uh, Sky King St. James is not kidding. I have almost 20 tubes of oils. Did winter Russians for bolt action. Yeah, well, so did I. So did I. Well, I mean, of, of all, of anything, winter Russians in oils, most definitely. Oh, my God. That was, yeah, that was the second army painting series that I ever did was my winter Russians in oils. Now, see how that, we got that purple next to the, right next to that yellow there it's right next to the yellow yeah 
let's get some more of our and then faded ultramarine it is it's sort of a purple it's purple ish kind of like purple not necessarily purple I don't know let, let's see what we want to do with our eye here let's see what we want to do with that maybe maybe I'll just take this yellow hit well it's already starting to turn green just by whatever faded ultramarine is in the brush Maybe, yeah, maybe it's some kind of almost like a weird fluorescent green for the eye. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, look at that. That's kind of nifty here. Let's, uh... I got me some of that beaded ultimate right here, but let's, let's do something like this. This could be interesting for the eye. And we'll do, obviously, the usual sort of dragon eye type thing as well. Sort of like that color for out here, too. Uh, yeah, look at that. It's going to go right next to some of our faded ultramarine here. We start to really bring out those furrows in his brow. Kind of like that Vampire Lord. Remember, there was that crazy greenish color on the top of his head and his wings and stuff to give that a bit of a difference than all of the really warm reds and oranges that we used for the wings yeah so that's what we'll that's what we'll do here we can do a little bit more now that that has dried and again, using some of that proacryl I think it's pale yellow not bright ivory let's bring out some Light in his eye, and then maybe even a couple of, yeah, a couple of light like there. And if it's broken up, that's even a little bit better. You know, as we didn't do every single little scale, we sort of broke that up a bit. Here, let's take some of our faded ultramarine. We'll lighten it up a little bit. And then what I can do is just sort of compare this to the eye on the other side and see if we like what we have so yeah that was yeah I think that'll be fun I am going to really go into the fluorescent yellow here make that even a bit more intense take some of this away I'll take some of my green liner here. And we're going to go in the opposite direction on the eye. Here. Let's do a little touch of not just there with that green, but also in here now. See, so we're really starting to spread around that green because, uh, as Nessie would say, he would repeat it in the Book of Wapple if a color goes somewhere. It must go everywhere. And again, if some of that green starts to work its way next to all of the reds, well, we'll have ourselves a nice piece of contrast there. That's about a bit more on this eye. Right about there. And let's see what we can do for our eh, the kind of dragony type thing. There's a Highly technical paint term, a dragony thing. Take a little bit of the green liner with the red liner here. And this is where it really does. I mean, not only is it nice and rich and dark, but it's. You can see how much control you can exert over it, especially for things that are along the lines of freehand. Get them upside down here. Do that nice little slit for the eye, classic dragon type there. I'm going to just throw a couple of strokes here to make that a 
little more contrasty. I think go with some of the feed it ultramarine down into the there's a couple little dots in there and I think if I bring out some of those yeah we'll bring out some of these now and then actually do a little bit of glazing over the top of those knock those back down again now I could take some of the the same gloss stuff that we used I think we did it on Vizirian too let's double check yeah yep we used it on there and that gave us a nice little see a little highlight that follows there yes the book of Wapo. I, I what i wish is that you know okay you ch claim your chat reward points and then i could get a gift to play or something like that but i don't know i don't think streamlabs really does that i think that's something that i'd have to make well that's where the, i guess the stream deck would come in right where i'd have it a key programmed for that and someone becomes builder of the pyramid the next thing you know a book of wapple thing shows up there i'm just just gonna guess and that's how that might go here let's start to these are actually not pointing down towards the flame part here so we're gonna make a little bit of a change on some of these With our faded ultramarine, it's powerful enough to change light itself. Look at that. Samurai Jack in the house. Uh, I just uh, want to make sure I can keep track of what everybody's saying here. And that will translate this to the other side as well. But this is me just trying to figure out, okay, like here. Is this faded ultramarine? Is this light enough on this side? Do we take some of the maiden flesh, make that a little bit lighter, and hit a few more of these, maybe, and then maybe glaze them back darker again? Who knows? Now, like I said, we can still go so much lighter just on this other end here with our fire. Let's do some of that. So here's that. that ooh, let's give it a touch of the orange here. And we'll just grab a couple of these. Certainly do some highlights on these horns, I think. more of the orange and yellow together here right over his there we go I think we'll just hit a few of these so now that his eye starts to recede a little bit just more by virtue of the but the eye being a little bit green and then you've got the intensity of all this orange here next to it that's about a bit more of our yeah I'm gonna go with a little lighter here on the underside of just a few of these sometimes yeah you gotta maybe fudge things a bit just to keep the interest level where it should be. Now, how's about down here? Yeah, see, that, that gets too yellow. I can just take that fluorescent orange and go over the top. So we've got, we have what we have here, and then we spin around here, and you can see how this is where we were not too long ago on this side. I will continue now to see how light do we go and yeah I think as much as I want that to be on the darker set I also have to have some of these lighter tones here I just got to because I can still go way lighter with my oranges and yellows I know I've got that in my back pocket 
Hey, we got a Ford Fitch in the house. Oh, Dixie. Yeah, well, definitely say hi to her for me as well. Yeah, okay. I think you can, can, yeah, you can see some of the green that's worked its way in there. Let's uh, try some more of that. Okay, and this is just a green liner. That's mixed with the pale yellow. And then actually I'm going to throw a little bit of my fluorescent in there. That's supposed to be a green dragon. It's just, again, to give it a little different color here. Because you get this big old bust. Why are you painting this big old bust? If you're not going to take advantage of that and really try and explore some of this color here. If it's going to be just a 28 mil dragon head or something like that and be much smaller, well, then, then you, okay, whatever. Now, the thing is big enough, definitely maybe give it a shot. Here, let's, I am going to go, if possible, I want to get me some reflected, yeah, see that right there? Okay, let's do that some more. Let's do a little bit more of that. I've got some of the... Some of the lighter tone added, some of that uh, pro acryl. However, I need to get me some orange in there. Let's see if we can make this work. And I'm thinking that's about right there. Not super perceptible, just it's there. Just the tiniest little hint of it because we got all of this going on on his eyebrow. Why not have some of it near his eye as well? And look, we can start to pick out some of these. That's the texture. We just didn't do much with that texture for a while. We knew we were coming back to it. New we're coming. It's just sort of. Look at this. There's a kind of works its way up this way. So instead of doing all of this individual highlighting of scales early on, we obviously have waited for a while before we get into something like this. And I'm probably also going to go back over the top of those and maybe knock some of those down as well. I think some of these also need some light. Yes. Yes, we'll just bring some of those out again, and then I'm going to probably glaze over the top of those a little bit of the clear red mixed with the fluorescent orange. I also want to see what's going to happen here. Maybe not quite so quite so bright with there we go that's a little better I think also here on the gum line that needs some lights as well oh Samurai Jack totally wobbled this jungle base that with the pro acryl clears just slap green blue and brown and all blended together it is actually I haven't worked with the transparency I think that's the maybe that's what I'll break out for tomorrow to, to kind of start off that other giant bust, I'll break out the, the transparent paints. I mean, it is, it's like a version of the clears, that's for sure. Oh, let's see. Just slap some paint on and blend it till I like it. Is Yeah, I just, it just, it seems so uh, painfully complex. It, it's almost like you, you have to open a car door and instead of just grabbing the handle and opening the car door, it's like you you walk around the car three or four times. You, I don't know, wash the door handle and then read the instruction book and do something else. And then you finally open the door instead of just grabbing the door handle and getting in the car. I don't know. Hey, we have Kwai's in the house. Or Kiwi's. 
Oh, yes, yeah, some of Kathy's uh, famous Nurgle uh, nutsack things going on there. With all the pustules. I'm just looking here to make sure we've got uh, a wide awake and I'm not missing either of the wapples. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Josh. Appreciate that. I appreciate it. Here, let's get ourselves some more of our orange in on these. I, I do like the way this texture kind of goes up and down and over like that. And it's, it's sort of the, I guess, the reward, right, for doing all that nasty stuff in the beginning. All those really rough glazes and everything else and taking the sponges and her hands looked like this and the miniature didn't look much different than my hands do right now. But eventually that's where you get to kind of enjoy this phase. Oh, uh -huh. I finally got to see the final episode of the Third Doctor. So it is, well, I don't know. I, I guess I won't ask in case of spoilers. How, how he meets his doom or demise or whatever. So that the next guy takes over for him. I can somewhat, I can just barely hear some of the Doctor Who music playing in the background. It must be 8 o'clock then. No, it's only 7.30. So again, we're going to start to think about some brighter things there. And you can see the difference there. This was all set up. So this is that framework that I keep talking about all the time. And then we develop it. We just keep on developing that. You can refine it as much as you want or as little as you want. It's all up to you. I will go in here with again, some of my orange here that has a little bit of the the pro acryl in there it makes it opaque enough to cover and yeah, let's get a couple of fiery touches here on the gums and the teeth I think we need some down here too oh, there's a Lord Wedge in there oh how you doing Lord Wedge Sorry if I miss folks as they come in here. I do apologize. I do try to keep track of the chat. Eventually we'll we'll have the whole moderator thing going on. We'll have some mods here, maybe a whole army of mods. Which means I'm gonna have to find some mod squad picks so that people can choose their own mod squad member and be part of the mod squad let's see do we want yeah let's, let's start to work back here now too on these these fins not those fins speaking of winter Russians 1939 the Mannerheim line Yeah, look at this. Look at what we can bring out on his... I'm just going to call him some kind of almost like gills type thing here, whatever. And here too. Maybe we can start to bring out some of this texture as well. And this is a... I think it's some of the original mix that we were starting to slap onto this uh, hour and a half ago. So yeah, an hour and a half ago, this had Zippo paint on it. It had some primer on it, and that's it. Oh, Megan ain't in the house. Megan ain't in the house. So we, we meet once again, except this time, it, it's me with the brush in my hand instead of me watching somebody else. That has been the interesting, most interesting thing about doing the, the whole Twitch environment here is actually for the first time in 20 years, I get to see somebody else paint. 
Oh, uh, let's see. What does uh, oh, Sky King say? I love the fins. I think they treat everything like that. Uh, I'm telling you, it's like, well, you know, you get out the exacto knife, and now it's time for some morty. Yeah, the morty tactics. Chop up that firewood. Look at this. We can get a couple of other brighter touches right there. Kind of gives it that sort of flamey look there. I think we can get some of these now. Start to think about what's going to happen down here and just how bright that's going to be. But just like before, remember I said we can work lighter and then kind of knock it down a little bit with the glaze. We can still do that here even with our object source lighting. Oh, let's see, yeah, me watching other people paint, it was, well, effectively I'm watching other people paint as I paint. Actually, technically watching two other people paint while I paint. Because I try to have one going on the phone and another one on whichever machine or laptop or computer that I happen to be near. So technically, yeah, it's it's watching two people while I paint myself. Last night I had two people on while I was actually prepping this thing. Got to see someone reach their their 500 follower goal. We have actually... I, I was very shocked to, to see before I started this that we were at 1,001 followers. I think now we're at 1,006, something like that. Now eventually, remember, we want greens in here, green in the eye. Because I liked all the, the different greens that went into here. Speaking of greens, I'm going to take some of the just the straight up green liner here. Because we've been adding lighter and lighter. Let's uh, let's add some darker now. That's going to go right down into here. And this is where I can carve out a few little scales. We've been adding again yeah, the lights. Let's add some darks, but also some green. I think we'll give him some more furrows here. He's uh, got quite the furrowed brow on our dragon here. Also going to take away a little bit of the red that's in there. As that shadow area, then that's it's two things. It's not just making it darker. We are now putting a dark green right next to some of our brightest oranges and reds. That's that kind of extra level of contrast that's going to happen. Then if, let's say I just took a dark red. Yeah, there would be. You would have some contrast there of dark versus light. But now, like I do that here. By doing this here with this, again, that is a green. I'm going to take some of the red liner here. Hello, little hobbit. Spark my ganja. <laughs> Who does Gandalf welcome? Gandalf well, believe we believe, we do believe that Gandalf welcomes you here. To Wobble, thank you so much for the follow. And see how all of a sudden that, just the addition of this little bit of red liner here. And look at, I'll just take some of that away. We have green liner and red liner side by side. I will continue to toss in some more of my red liner here. This is that really fun stage where you, you see progressively smaller little detail like this. We're taking red liner, putting it right next to our lighter green that we did. And that's basically, it, it's sort of like a fluorescent green in a way. I'm going to, now that I've added, yeah, look at this. We're going to pick up just a few of those scales. Look at that. 
that was just a mishmash of nothing there. And now we've picked out a few skills. Actually, I'm going to see if I can make this bigger here. Oh, let's see. It feels like a hobby night when I'm painting along. Although Twitch is much more like Fort Welp. Yes, it is. Well, that's the. that was what I did not expect. I did not really. Here we go. I'm going to make sure we've got ourselves some focus. We'll brighten it up. Let's see. So it can handle more than one stream. Oh, yeah. Well, actually, doing it on the phone and the hardwired computer, it, they don't obviously they're not fighting quite so much over the same bandwidth. But look at this. See a couple of these little greenish dots here. Let's get some more over his eye here. And there's these little scales that we can now pick out at our leisure. So like here, no scales picked out. But over here, now we start to pick those out. And when you now contrast it with all of the juicy, bright, intense oranges, yeah. <laughs> Ko Koi says, uh, we also painted what? This is a heck of a community. It sure is. Now let's see, uh, Lord Wedge, I, I tacked weathering after six years. It's always so intimidating for me. Or tackled, okay. Yeah, let's get okay. We're gonna lighten this up just it. Yeah, let's get a little bit of our fluorescent yellow in there too. I want to lighten up that one part of the eye here, and then let's give him his little that little highlight that you get so often in the eyes. We'll develop just a couple of these little tiny scales here. Oh, I think we'll do some of that here too. And then we're gonna go in with some of the faded ultramarine. It's just a little one one brush stroke, one little dot here. It brings out some scaly joy. However, let's get some of that again. The faded ultramarine. Put you over here somewhere. Where you can have some fun. Oh I'm gonna yeah, I've got the maiden flesh out there already. Let's do this. Let's have some fun with that. Oh, we'll say like here too, because there's some more little scaly bits in there, just like there are here. We've been doing the little tiny dots here with the green. Let's do it with the faded ultramarine also. I want to see what happens. Hopefully that is a mid tony enough green there. That's lighter than I expected. It's going to go in here. Can't look at all that. The greens, the blues, and then over here, you see we just have our kind of original, the yellows that we threw in there. Get back to our faded ultramarine here. Some of our green. Taking some green liner and some of the red liner. We'll mix those together. Get making a little bit of a change there. As we do that here and there, and now we've got some nice little contrast going on. We just we didn't have the contrast we needed. This is again red liner, green liner. Looking for more. And here, like so, some of these scales. When I went in one direction, adding the light over the top, the texture. Got a little bit covered. Now we're going to go more of the red liner look here. Let's develop some of these scales now. Uh, Lord Wedge, you can... Oh yeah, I think uh, there's there's definitely no... Uh, you should be able to link here. There won't be any bot that, that uh, takes the link away so that people can check it out. 
And if you ever want me to you know, give you a little bit of an assessment on something or judge you harshly, there's that too. Speaking of Megan Hain, uh, you can always send me Instagram or Facebook or whatever. You can send me pics of your stuff and then we can converse about it so that I can actually take some time and again judge you very harshly and then pass judgment upon you and then you will have been judged I'm gonna go back to some of my clear red over here like I said before here look at this we'll just throw in some texture in here because over here you can see no texture over there texture and it's not always just taking progressively lighter colors it's it's back and forth we've gone from mid-tones to dark to light to back to dark again sometimes it's just easier to almost draw in the texture this way after the fact now here we need I think we need some orange in here and oh my gosh I just I took some of the clear orange mixed it with the with the red and it's funny just how dead that seems in comparison to the fluorescent orange there's just nothing like it there is there is no orange like the fluorescent orange just no comparison you can have the most fiery orange or fiery red paint color ain't going to work uh, let's see what we have with the walk of shame yet yeah, well critique Thursdays baby watercolor class several enter very few survive that was there were there were casualties every week of critique Thursday you always wondered who was going to be running out of the room crying and that ain't a joke because that happened at least once or twice a month sometimes you just never saw them again which was uh, tricky because we were on the 16th floor of a building downtown there we go it's a long way down to Michigan Avenue So again texture over here none over here we can so it was easier to actually just throw in some generalized light color there and then after the fact go in there and mess with it so with the darks numbskull thank you so much for the sub it is appreciated well wait a minute we got nourishment in the tip jar <laughs> thank you so much well probably a spell brush says thank you Thank you. He needs that to stick around. Well, geez, I mean, hello, object source lighting much. Flamey and green. Object source lighting everywhere. Oh, we got a lady bee in the house. Let's see. Uh, I'm going to go with my zunk. Look at that. So color is gone, but we still have some Sheen them. See as we turn it around here, we don't have the the precision. Put over here. Now look at that. You can see all the little texture there in his face, even though the, the color Hello, is gone. Arms. Spark my ganja. Well, oh, thank you. Belgium Todd Box. Belgium Todd Box. Oh, thank you very much. Wapelius. Thanks. He's black and white. Wapelius right now. Thank you so much for the sub. Let's bring back our color here so it's not all black and white. There we go. Oh, Gandalf, his, his ganja has been lit several times in more ways than one. And, and well, we're sort of... This guy's going to light his ganja too, I, I think, because uh, he is quite the... Quite the flamey dragon, which actually, the more I think about it, so if Gandalf had fireworks, how did no one think to uh, 
make something that would blow up Baradora the Black Gate? That was that's the question that has been on my mind the last few weeks. As I think about the deeping wall going kaplooey. And it's like, wait a minute. Both sides had access to fireworks. Now look at, yeah, I can see I asked how nice and rich and intense your fluorescence can be. Let's get some more. Get just developing these individual little scales here. Okay, yeah. I think I will go one more level up here. I'm going to throw some more on my Again, this is the golden acrylics for the people that haven't seen this earlier. There is actually, speaking of Blackheart Miles Dragons, there is a Smaug bust. It's the same scale as this. Again, we've got the, so here's your, there's one of three Game of Thrones, or there's your Verizian there compared to our, I almost said Drogon. He's not Drogon. He's not Drogon, but look at, oh yeah, I'm really liking the green that's in there. So we'll have to, like I said, we'll repeat that on the other side too. But for now, I'm going to get into my faded ultramarine here. We are going to develop some of this texture, which is kind of gone, I want to say neglected. I want to find some more of these little, again, is, is scales run from like folds in the skin like we got here to all these little tiny dots like we've got here. And then the best way is that we get some of our lighter dots in. Now we're going to take our green-red mix, our red-green. Yes, today is acrylics on a rain of fire dragon now uh, saturday especially is going to be oils that's going to be one of those very long well at least that's the plan anyways saturday is supposed to be a really long epic stream kind of like a couple of weeks ago oh actually i don't know if people they've now i've shown the pictures of them but speaking of oils so these were all painted in oils here. And I'm going to do this because they are not magnetized yet. I forgot, but there's your brown matter right there. Our horsey there. Boy, I really love that. Oh, let's see. Nessie is painting salamanders. Yes, with the, the dulcet tones. Yes, indeed. The non judgmental dulcet tones. Once again, taking some of my green line over the faded ultramarine, but you can't keep faded ultramarine down. You just can't. Eventually, it rises up to the surface as a highlight on his nose. So I think uh, probably 7,000 chat points will get you the ultimate faded ultramarine. You can be a faded ultramarine. <laughs> there we go. That's what you'll be. You will become the, the faded ultramarine. You will be absorbed by it. Oh, how's about right here on his... Uh, never really know what the heck these are supposed to be. Are they supposed to be ears or ear sacks or whatever the heck those things are supposed to be? Or just spikes? I never really know. Speaking of things to develop, let's take some of our greenish gray here. Because we've got as much dark as we can get in there. Now it's time to get a little bit lighter. This is that, the wonder of the mid-tones here. Mid-tones at play. Oh, let's make that a touch lighter as well. Yeah, I'm going to get, to, oh yeah, look at, see a couple of those? 
because it's not enough for this to just be dark here. We have to have some mid tone, and this it looks so light here only because we managed to get so much dark in at the start. Now we'll do. So I'll, I'll look at, uh, again, just send me those things in a like a private message or like a whisper or something like that, because I will look at those. I really am focused on doing this right here. So if uh, folks want me to kind of look at something and give them some advice and that sort of thing, I always do that kind of offline, if you don't mind, especially since I got my hand full, hands full of a dragon here. And I really can't, my monitor setup is not terribly good to be analyzing stuff while I'm painting. But it's definitely handy to do that offline. I've already done that a bunch of times. We're back to our craft brushes here because we want to start to develop some of this stuff too. I will say back here. Faded Ultramarine once again. Oh, uh, now we have a one true brush. There we go. Now, for, now I don't know if you get to use the... Like, there should be a little graphic there. I don't know really what happens. I don't have no clue. <laughs> All I know is I made some graphics there. And I wasn't sure if that's like uh, an emote that you can use or it's an emote that you unlock or something. Because we've had a couple of pyr pyramid builders too. Oh, dragons don't facilitate multitasking. <laughs> uh, let's see, Warmonger is a, a bleached boy marine. I like that. Let's see. I chipped uh, with a little black brown, then a metallic, use some dark brown. So yeah, I will definitely check that out post stream. And like I said, if you got, if you can send me that link in a whisper or something like that, then it'll give me more time to check that out afterwards. And we're gonna dust this right over there again with the faded ultramarine. Yeah, you know, let's lighten it up a touch here. I'm thinking the these will maybe be dark. Instead of doing those lighter, let's do those darker. These spines here. However, we will we'll get some light on this edge. It's already again, not a whole lot there, but we're already starting to see some development over here. No reason why we can't let the craft brush do some work here again. It really does save your Windsor Newtons from getting pounded. Especially on something like this that potentially has a really rough texture to it. You can see there's plenty of color on the brush and even this one is this one's seen some action and it's still able to look at that. We're still able to do some some dot action with it. Get a little bit more of the maiden flesh here. Uh, let's see. Belady Bee has been tempted to get uh, some AK Interactive True Metal. Oh, we have Rigid. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. This is the Blackheart Models Reign of Fire Dragon. Now, let me see if I can wander up here a little bit. Uh, now it could be that they have to approve those yet so I only did them this afternoon so that may be it may be waiting for approval they showed up on mine but I don't know again all this other kind of hidden stuff about Twitch with chats and all that other kind of stuff and those sort of things that I have no idea about the, the focus is on uh getting stuff on the screen and it always will be 
and there most likely will not be too many animations that play like maybe you see on other channels because that would be a wee bit distracting if I was right in the middle of kind of a little key action as far as the tutorial goes and then it gets covered up by an animation of some kind and uh, I know that kind of goes against what you see on a lot of the other Twitch channels but this is Wapleville right here we make our own rules this is where the craft brush and faded ultramarine rule that and Easterlings too Hello, little hobbits. Spark my ganja. Speaking of which, we have a follow by RJ Giddings. Thank you so much for the follow. I know I'm going to get back into some of my fluorescent green here because that was fun. That was fun to have that. Here we go. So a little bit of, again, fluorescent yellow mixed with our green. And let's have some fun here on our scales. We, we did some of those faded ultramarine ones, right? Now let's get in here. Let's get in here with some of our green and have some fun with that. Look at this. Not to say that we cannot go back over it with some glazes and knock those down, tint them, whatever. Just like we did down here where we started to pick out all these little pieces. These are all acrylics. This is the Reaper Clear and Liner Paints with the fluorescent golden acrylics here. So just your fluorescent orange. We got some of the clears going. We do have one Pro Acryl out here plus, of course, Faded Ultramarine, of course. Yeah, we went with acrylics here so that we could, well, I could handle it like this for one thing. Because if this were oils, it would be, <laughs> that would be a little bit troublesome to keep that paint from getting all smeared. So therefore, yes, this is acrylics. I also needed it to be dry when we are done. And as Kathy mentions, if you see the wet palette as opposed to the, aha, here we go. So this is a. So when you see that, that's an oil palette. You see, no water, things to paint. That will always give it away. The Chinese food container will always let you know. Nessie knows foo. Yes, sirree. So that that'll be. I'll, I'll try and have that channel reward thing done. Like I said, I guess it just has to approve those. It hasn't told me that they were up for review, but I guess that's what happens. <laughs> Again, I have no clue. My focus is definitely on this side of things as we took some of our... Look, we're, this is red-green. Here, we'll take some of the red liner wherever... Oh, no, wait a minute. Let's have some fun with some clear purple. A little clear purple in some of the green here. Mix those together after I get a drink of something here. Ah, let's see. The oil palette is the, it's the exact same. Here we go. Piece of cardboard, and it's the exact same parchment paper that's on the wet palette. It's just that there's a dry piece of cardboard and no water involved. But now we've got blue and green mixing together in harmony to make a darker gray it's going to go right down in here. In fact, I'm going to go right over the tops of those and then just take some paint away. I'm going to do a bit of a glaze of this here. Like you do. There we go. See some of the little scales and the fins come out because we all know that blue or sorry purple and green together make us a nice gray some even more green in that mix 
Now I'm going to take some of my faded ultramarine here. Let's see what we can do. A little quick wet blending here. Nothing, nothing fancy. Yeah, good enough. Gonna leave that for now. Don't want to get too much in the way of highlights on the spines. Now these, there we go. That was too much of a transition on those. It was just, it was too much, too fast. Also here, we're gonna cut down on some of the lighter tones here because we can do that because we don't want that to be too much action. We want the action to happen over here. Whereas, wow, look at that. I just noticed that ore. Well, he's got, he's got so much stuff that he can munch on right here. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna look, oh, and Jokalups, uh, welcome in. Let's see, your sub emotes go through a few process to take, the, ah, see. The first ones took, I think the, like the first ones take the longest and then they take less time because the last ones that I did, the first ones took, oh gosh, like a week and a half or two weeks or something like that. The second ones took maybe a week and then the most recent ones were just a couple of days. So who knows, maybe by the end of the weekend those will show up. But at least the rewards are there. Because what happened to me when I was trying to make, and this was on another machine, using all the same files, everything was the same, kept telling me they were too big. On this machine, they were fine. It's like, what the heck is going on? It was just, it's bizarre. It is completely bizarre. But, oh, I like this. That's a uh, faded ultramarine and clear red. That's that's a nice little color right there. Let's play with that too. Oh, let's say right here. And let's say maybe in the mouth there. And on his gums. And here, I think I will do that as a, yeah. It's going to be not super perceptible there, but that also is actually bringing out some more texture. There is so much of this, the tiny little dots here, tiny little scales. He eats all the thing. You can't trust, can't trust a fire breathing dragon at all. You just can't. Actually, if he was green, he would be like bitey. That's that's the other thing that's probably going to... I think even the ultimate, like the 10,000 points or something like that's going to have to be a Trunko. And then we'll have to make one for Kathy that's a Jiro. Because Trunko and Jiro, they've been, they've been with us a while, and they go with us wherever we go. So they should also go to Twitch with us. I do like my greens in there. I'm going to maybe... No, no, I'm going to isolate the greens to there. But what I will do is... Lighten up this. Oh, I'm just going to take some of that. Just going to grab some of whatever that was, the pale yellow. We're going to lighten up some of these scales right along here too. Yeah, but I'm thinking, see how it goes in this pattern? Like, there's kind of two patterns. There's one that goes this way, and then there's the one that goes this way. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the faded ultramarine. Hopefully you can see this. What am I? Let's see. <laughs> that's, uh, no, no, that's F you. That is the, that is a joke that's been going around for the longest time because of Faded Ultramarine. It's so powerful as the most powerful of all the paint colors anywhere. 
and we were going to make a superhero painted and faded ultramarine and it was just going to have an FU on his shirt because that's all you need to know about faded ultramarine uh, let's see hey it's a red dragon monoworks how are you doing how was your uh, YouTube live Kathy said that you were doing a YouTube live probably I don't know about an hour before I started here but check out guys the styrene syndicate and red dragon model works because speaking of dragons there's a person who loves his dragons how many reaper dragons have you done in the uh, just the last couple of months here now we're still counting the five-headed dragon as one but even then that's still got to be at least four or five oh, are you gonna start up the vlog that's very cool so six of them since uh this is pretty much the start of the year right or no actually yeah it's been it's been a whole bunch of those boys you've done a whole bunch of them now i guess this, here's a, something to show you too now we can still go much lighter here but now let's not forget down here let's not forget our our lighting once again so let's go back into that Let's go back in. I got to throw out a little bit more of a fluorescent yellow here. And again, these are the golden acrylics. Um, oh, Hobby, Hobby Man Mike Gaming. Welcome in. Welcome in. We're just doing we've got one side here we're de really developing this side of our reign of fire dragon bust again from blackheart models oh let's get a little bit more of our a little touch more of our orange there now let's start to develop this let's start to develop some of this i'm going to throw a little touch of my clear red in there and just like we've been doing along here let's do that along here got all these nifty little dots that we can do but remember when we started out it was just quick glazes taking the sponge wiping paint away it looked horrible looked like absolutely nothing just think of that well you wouldn't build a house well maybe some would I don't know but you wouldn't start out a house with window treatments and the roof you would start out with the foundation some rebar some concrete and then you'd build yourself some studs you build yourself some framework and then you'd start hanging drywall on that framework and once you had all that done then you start doing things like oh window treatments and wallpaper so it works its way up here nice and nice and subtle remember at the beginning it was just all boom smash him in the face this is where we start to calm things down I think yes we're gonna get a little bit of our clear red in here get some definition on these guys maybe even back here too it's a nice thing about the clear red look at this even here can be a touch of middle tone light not everything has to be an orange glow sometimes it can just be a reddish glow too How's about a little bit more of that back in here? And also here. So this is like a semi glade This is the advantage of the clears, the Reaper Clear and liner paints, especially the clears. You can see it's it's not all runny, but it's sort of acting like a glaze. That's why I call it the dry glaze. 
can do some of that right here too. It's uh, we've we've brightened it up, and now guess what? We're gonna knock it back down again. And we're gonna do some more of that over here. Oh, maybe up here too on his yeah, top of his jaw up there. Yep, throw every. <laughs> It it, it kind of is. It's like spaghetti. You just throw it at the wall, and what doesn't stick, you eat. Actually, I just eat the stuff that sticks too. It just it's more convenient. It stays up there longer for me. Here, let's darken some of this down. Oh, I think we'll work some more of our again our clear red in there. Uh, let's see. Well, thank you very much, Lady B. I'm, I'm glad that this is uh, amenable for you here. And and the uh, again the white so spirits. Say we all. So say we all. Well, thank you for Hobby Man Mike. Thank you for being. Thank you for the sub. So this is what this is that stuff that I I sent you the link for. But for now, here let's get. Pelius and he's gonna. Uh, oh, wait a minute! Sneak attack, sneak attack. Well, we're just. Wait a minute! I said there wasn't gonna be any funny animations going on. Maybe there are, but there was a little celebration of Dragon and Wapelius there, for the sub. Thank you so much. It is appreciated. Thank you so much, Hobby Man Mike. So we're gonna we're gonna work in some more of our again. That's just a clear red. Basically, that's all it is. You see how this is starting to a little light to dark action going on there, developing that a little more. Look at this. And even in here, some of those dots have a little bit of the red and can't. There's their structure, and this is what we build off of it. Uh, throw on the Benny Hill song. Uh, oh, Dexter Corva. Let's see. Just gonna look and see. Yep, the Hungry Dragon. Let's see. When you say, do you mean transparent? PA or just really thin down? The you know, here's another one of the clear paints. So this is just think of this as pure. Oh, that's cactus flower. It's not clear magenta. Clear blue. This is basically just blue. Uh, it's just the, the actual blue color. This is the pigment. There's no white added to this. There's no black added to it. Just basically, literally, blue pigment. So it's very intense in its color. But it's also not going to necessarily cover something because it doesn't have any of that white in there. So let me see if I can find... Uh -huh. So this is another kind of example of the, the clear blue at work here. So most of this, the clear blue is a part of the mix, but you can see where the blue gets lighter. That's why I maybe mixed in something that was opaque and light, like maybe the Maiden Flesh or the Maggot White or something. So they're not actually transparent quite in the way you would think of, oh gosh, I don't know. This is, again, a little clear purple over here. What am I going to do? I'm going to mix it with an opaque color. But now I have this really nice purple here. But it's also that the straight up clear purple also is nice and dark. It's also nice and but look at this. Look at that. Well, let's put some of this purple in here. Why not? Let's just use this here. Let's lighten it up a little more. Let's have some fun with some of our clear purple here. But here you can see I was just sort of brushing the clear red over the top of that. Let's see. Reaper Clear, this, it's a very specific part of their paint line, which actually for a while they were going to get rid of because nobody knew what the heck to do with it because sadly they called it clear. So people thought that meant clear paint. Like it was literally transparent, but it's not. It's semi-translucent, and that's different. That is different than being transparent. It's just got to actually watch Kathy on her stream, which she does... Tuesday through Friday, 
from three to five central she uses the clear she actually uses a lot more of the clear magenta than i do i just keep forgetting about it's like it's like floor clears the 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 saturation in those is just it's amazing because it is quite literally pure pigment yeah the the well i guess uh what is it you can have 28 seconds of a song or something like that without it being a violation of some kind <laughs> we'll have to have the the benny hill song play as the dragon chases wapelia spellbrush around yeah here let's let's throw in some more of our again that's the clear purple mixed with the mixed with that now the pro acryl that i mixed it with that is a very opaque very much a covering type of color that's going to really cover okay so we've added some of our light here right now let's go with here's that that clear purple we'll mix it with the green liner to make a nice really rich dark gray and then we're going to see if we can't bring out some shapes here too like we've done elsewhere Actually, i'm going to grab me a, a slightly different brush for that like this one can you see that yes you can And it's the same kind of stuff we were doing here. We're just going to bring back a little bit of structure here. But the nice thing is, with the clear paints, you don't need to make it into a, like a soupy wash. You can literally just brush them on straight up, and they will give you kind of a semi-translucent look. It was something I found completely by accident. I had no idea that's what they did. We kept thinking it was more like the Tamiya clear red that so many people use for blood effects or something. And then I just happened to try it once a, a long time ago, probably eight years ago-ish, maybe more. And that's when I, when I was kind of revealed what it could do. use this more over here let's see <laughs> yeah I just make up shade make up shades of paint I put yeah Kathy does the yeah she has magenta green that's that's officially a Kathy color that I can't claim magenta green but I still claim red green and green red is mine at least green red is mine for sure no doubt about it now let's get some let's get some darker folds in here but see if I have it this with a little bit of purple in it, at least we've got a bit of our red. But then I can take some of my actual again clear red. You can see it it's not clear, as in you can see right through it. But it is semi translucent. It's kind of a important I know it's a it's minutia right there, but it's very important minutia. <laughs> Now we'll develop this some more too. Now I can get the coolest purple by mixing. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, the, the the that's another one that I keep forgetting about all the time. Actually, in the clear thalo blue, I forget about that too. That would probably would have been really nifty for the dull amroth knights. And actually, yeah, that dull amroth knight that you saw. That's one of my that's like my newest army painting series that I'm working on for the Patreon page. And I'm using tons of the clear and liner paints for it. So that's at the $15 a month level. Wait. Hello, little hobbits. Spark my ganja. We have, oh, Draconic Visions. Thank you for joining our little, little dragon painting exercise here. Gandalf welcomes you in. So yeah, each of the army painting series is five episodes long, and I'll eventually I'll show you some previous army painting series. Can 
check a lot of those out on Instagram too. And actually some of the other painted dragons. There's a little there we go. Bit more. Get some separation again. Some more down here. Separate those teeth. Even thinking about some more scaly type shapes in here. Look at this. I'm just drawing those in. Basically filed away whatever texture was there just because it kind of had to. And I can just restore it. So here, look, we'll bring in some more of these darks again. Oh, we need some separation here, it looks like, and here. And then over here, we got kind of a whole lot of nothing happening. So we're going to try and put something in there. Right, yep, right in there again. Playing off the green with this purple color here. Because we can. Oh, let's get some... Uh, couple little bits of our... It's starting to almost... Oof, it would be sacrilege to say it's looking a little bit like Faded Ultramarine, but it kind of is. Oh, Brent Woods, I love it. Begin with a specific paint line to fulfill a specific purpose. Yeah, it's... It's it's weird. We talk about this a lot here in Wappleville. It's where people seem to always want one paint line and do everything with the one paint line. And we just say, look, this this paint does this thing really well. This one doesn't do it so well. But this other paint line does this well. Let's just use all the different paint lines for the stuff that it does well. Oh, let's see, Draconis. Oh, thank you very much. It's uh, this is the it's one of the Reign of Fire dragons here. Now I'll show you another one here. It, the colorations are very similar. This is the Drogon, but it's another one by Blackheart. So you can see a lot of those. We use a lot of the clear and liner paints on this too. You see the blues and the the grays. What we've added here to this guy, obviously, is the object source lighting. Since well, the whole Reign of Fire type thing. And now this is a whole very different color scheme. So this is your Verizian dragon, I think. This is from, again, Game of Thrones. Nice little, again, we did the clear inliner paints. This is on my a YouTube channel. Oh, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Let's see. I see in many streams I've stopped in and now follow. Oh, thank you again for the follow. It is appreciated. Yeah, wait, it's... um. I mean, I've I have sold some of these in the in the some of the bus. Normally, we're painting miniatures, and that's our typical commission thing. But I know George has gotten a few of our busts over the years that we've painted. Now I do. Yeah, I want to go back to my while I've got it here. Going back to my clear purple. Mixing up a little bit of my yellow, and I want to see if I can't. There we go. And I'm just going to try and get a few little lines there. I don't want to make those too light, but I also want to have some kind of shape in there. There we go. Let's see. Uh, I'm looking here. You showed up on the right evening. Yes, there's definitely lots of dragons here. That's for sure. Oh, well, thank you very much. I will be probably painting in the very late night hours tomorrow. That is probably starting about 2.30 in the morning central. But Saturday, at least the plan is to be as soon as I can, uh, maybe 1 or 2 in the afternoon, maybe something like that, and just keep going through to the evening. So I will be doing this again tomorrow. Now I'm going to do the same right along this ridge line here. But now there's a little more structure to it. There we go. Because before, all we had was this. This is where we literally just wiped away the initial clear liners. But now, as we do this, there are these little subtle lines there that I can just start to bring those out. Now I'm going to go back to my 
some of my fluorescent green that I made here. Now there's also fluorescent green in the in those golden acrylics, but this is just kind of a little bit of my own that I made here, just taking the green liner and some of the fluorescent yellow. Again, trying to bring out some of these scales here and there. Bam, just a couple of those. I don't know, it, it makes it look, I don't want to say glossy, but it, almost that more, oh, what is it, uh, cartilage type of a texture, almost, I guess, more like a fish scale type texture if I do that with those, again, the different colors there. Uh, let's see, Saturday is an epic stream of many hours. Yes, it'll be mostly with oils, but there is, there's fluorescent oils now. Ah, boom. Look at see how it drives the camera nuts. That's how I knew that was going to do the that was going to do the trick. Oh, you're in Eastern Standard Time. Let's see what are what are we doing Saturday now? Uh, if you look at the Blackheart Models site and look at their one half scale busts, it's the I don't even know how to heck pronounce it. It's the Caracciola bust. But I'll show you a picture here of this is another half size bust that I did. Uh, I don't even remember what that's Angelique, I think, is the name of this one. So this is a bust that I did a couple of years ago. Now that was done with the Badger Airbrush, the Ghost Tints, and their Metalsmith stuff. I want to try that other bust, but do it in oils because you can see that that thing is half the size of a human head. So that's. Uh, that's why I can't do that quite just yet because I have to move all this stuff to make room for a bust that is gigantic. And we'll still see if it fits. I mean, it's going to, starting tonight, I'm going to have to start moving cameras around and lights and everything else to make room for that. But I think tomorrow I will be painting the acrylic part of it. Now I'm just getting to see a little bit of my couple, look at that, just a couple little dots there. That is the Pro Acryl. That's our Pro Acryl. I think it's the faded yellow, or not faded yellow, it's pale yellow, right? Yeah, pale yellow. Using that because it covers... I mean, it really, really does. If you're looking for lighter colors to cover, that's where your Pro Acryls come from. Let's see. Oh, we have cookie baking. Wait a minute. That happened Saturday. That happened Saturday. Actually, oh, Kathy, uh, well, she's finishing up a... Oh, gosh, I forget. I don't even remember what the name of the company is that made it. But it's sort of a Nurgle-type thing. But, well, she can tell you in the chat what's coming. But Privateer Press and Bust are two of the words in it. I'm going to get, yeah, look at this. I'm just going to throw a little bit of a, you know, highlight. And look at so the difference. Is that chain? We always talk about with the non-metallic metals, right? Peanut butter cookies this Saturday. Maybe and chocolate chips, too, if I really make the sad puppy dog face. Like, really, really super sad. Or maybe just pile up all of the taters to look at her really sad. And then maybe she'll make chocolate chip cookies too. Not that someone in the house ate the chocolate chip cookies. That did not happen. Uh, let's see. You didn't get cookies at the last... Well, that was... Remember, that was where I had... Well, actually some of the debris from my setting up the live stream that was where Kathy needed to place the cookies so thanks for reminding me because that's the other thing I got to do tomorrow is, is get that stuff out of the way uh, let's see just spent $40 AU on the $400 on the Games Workshop website was that the new Necron stuff I still got to get the new oh 
the new Aomir figure because I think that was about to be released when all of the fun times started happening. So we're starting to look at this. We're getting more specific here with our little right in there. Uh, see, I just don't understand why people don't embrace the raisins. They are nature's candy and also nature's trumpet. So look at what we've got going on just in here. There's greens, purples, blues. You know, again, here we, we set up the framework for doing all of this stuff over here. But now we're going back into some of our, again, that is the green liner looking to get some darks in here and watch what happens all of a sudden we have even more dramatic stuff happening on our folds and then we're going to grab some of that clear purple more dramatic action in our folds again we bring all of this little detail it's all there Remember how we were just sort of almost doing a little bit of a dry brush over that? And we weren't really seeing too much of it. Well, now you see a whole bunch of it. Uh, Fool's Chocolate. Ooh, that's a, that's actually a really good... I've got to remember that. I've got to remember that. Oatmeal Raisin is... Uh, yeah, there's nothing wrong with the oatmeal. It's, to me raisin and chocolate chips and peanut butter all in the same cookie now that would be good that would be nutritious and delicious let's see oh it's for dark imperium before it goes out of print oh, that yeah i have well 40k has kind of well it passed me by in fourth edition basically so i although i do have my sister's you know, this is another, where'd you go? Where's my other sister here? Aha! So this is another army painting series that I'm going to be doing. My Sisters of the Raven with the marble bases, the freehand, all the all the stuffs on them. Actually, let me see. Oh, so here's another. That's another one of the half life-size dragon, or a black heart models busts right there that is the seal from uh, species right there and let's see if we've got oh there's your Verizian, your your drogon but also so here again we've got this is a tip this is what i'm normally painting is stuff like this units and i also wanted to get to that that's that same green or, or same uh not pro acrylic, it's the same fluorescent golden, but it's just got the fluorescent green in there. And we're going to see some more again. We got more object source lighting right here. So that is your fluorescent orange, just like we're using here. You can see a little bit more. Those are just Reaper Bones figures, by the way. Back to Mr. Dragon again. something more in here and I do think that's going to be a combination of our green and purple together because sometimes when the physical texture gets a little bit muddied up sometimes you just have to paint that in by hand that's what we're going to do here we're going to reinforce that texture by hand Prunes are the, oh yeah boy that I haven't had those in a long time years I think some might say that's better for the environment but I don't think so once again gonna bring out a little bit of I'm just putting in dots here like I was putting in the light dots now I'm putting in some darker ones. I really, there we go. So it's not just darker than the fluorescent orange. It is also that clear, or the green liner. So we've got that opposition of the 
bright orange and the green bouncing off of each other like you do I do think I need some more of this up in here too a little more definition can't hurt I have to assess again down here what do we need here I think we need some more I think we'll go with the clear red and the fluorescent orange in there so let's do some of that those two go together so well again because of the look at that this is what I mean by semi translucency it covers it makes an impact it's not wet or anything like that it's that's why I just kind of call it a dry glaze. Didn't really know what the heck else to call it. Started calling it a dry glaze because it it covers it but not obliterates it. Yeah, let's turn this again upside down here. Let's get some of this right boom right in there. I think this side, uh, yes, this side uh, needed some too. And we'll just we'll keep working with this because I just want you to see this example of the look at that. See it covers, but it doesn't cover. It doesn't have to be watery to be a glaze. I didn't really realize that either until I started using the Reaper Clear and Liner paints. And I went, uh-huh, wait a minute. A glaze does not have to be this watery mess all the time. It can be something more. Speaking of which, speaking of which, do some of this over here, bottom side of these fins. There we go. But look at how what's underneath shows through. Now that there's the caveat. There's the caveat because you've got to have. Look at this because I have the darks and the lights already there. By essentially throwing this kind of middle tone that's transparent over the top of them, I get the benefits. Like right here, I get the benefits of those darker colors that are already in place. If those aren't already in place, this ain't going to make a darn bit of difference. So I, maybe that's another reason why it's harder for people to use these because they're not also used to... Look at this right over here. See that? See how it tones that down a little bit? It's not a glaze. It's not a glaze at all. Going to get... Uh, caught up on something here oh uh, oh air drying clay is that the the daz clay there now let's see draconic vision says now i want to send you the mini i made to watch you how you paint it well we we do that here i know well, i know i do people send me a lot of well like this <laughs> all of these artisan guild figures this is a friend of mine well actually he sculpted me so this is me and a lot of the the 3d sculptors these days they send me their figures and because it's so much easier right than the old days of buying precast figures so it's always fun to paint figures that basically from someone we know you know like a sculptor says hey here could you paint this this is my sculpt I've done that more than a few times, and that's kind of fun. Look at this here. Let's uh, let's creep up some of this red here. Again, it's the same red, right? Uh, let's see. Yeah, the basing stuff is a uh, warrior's drink. You bet. You dead. Well, so is palette. Palette sludge is a warrior's color. That's for sure. Prune juice, warrior's drink, palette sludge, a warrior's color, as Nessie knows. Uh, let's see. Made my first mini in ZBrush about a month ago. The Infernal Beholder. Oh, well, just uh, drop me some PMs or something like that, and we can go over those type of things. You can either be a whisper or something like that, or just shoot me a message on Facebook or something like that. I do the same thing here. I'm just going to take that 
semi-translucent red and just tone some of these areas down. And why is it translucent? Because it's a mix of two semi-translucent colors, the clear red and the fluorescent orange. Uh, let's see. Oh, of course, says, I want you to know I came back to the chat and saw it takes a certain stamina to drink prune juice. Ah, prune juice is it's smooth. It's like an elixir. I think, yes, yes, let's do some more. This little semi translucent reddish orange there brings out some more of the texture of our dragon. I think some of it in his mouth. Maybe even on his teeth over here. Yes. Touch of that on his teeth. So you can see, look at that, how it, it sort of it covers, but not all. And the more you fade it out like this, to it's like a dry glaze. It's the only thing, the only phrase that I could come up with to really describe what the heck it actually does. So big difference here. Again, this is our structure, and that is what we built off of that structure. Oh, Palo Sapip, uh, thank you so much for the kind words and for joining us here. Oh, let's see, Sky King converted by a wife and five kids. We want, oh, that's, uh, yeah, yeah, the, the next gen thing. Kathleen, oh, and that and B5. That and B5. Now let's let's go back over here and let's play with some of these same colors like we did over on this side. So we're going to get some of our faded ultramarine in here, just like we did there. Start to bring some of this texture out the same way we did on the other side. But it doesn't have to be the exact same. Uh-oh. Bill Robertson. Thank you so much for that. Oh, he's going to catch it. He caught it. I'm gonna, oh, oh, wait a minute. But then the dragon tries to chase him off. And he says, no, this is mine. The dragon says, that could be mine too. And again, the the Benny Hill music plays in the background. Now let's try some of our fluorescent green again over here that we had so much fun with before. That's just the literally fluorescent yellow. Mix it with the green liner. We get some fluorescent green because we're looking to do that same thing that we did with the eye. Oh boy, there's uh, well, and thanks again for the the bits and the cheering. That is appreciated. It is always appreciated. Yeah, let's get some of this. Not just into his eye, but also here in some of these other textures. Using that same, remember the the liner brush because it's it's synthetic, so the you've got that firmness to the actual bristles. However, it holds a whole bunch of paint. It holds its shape really well. And look at how I can have my hand. Like this, the, the death grip here, can't be doing nothing with the death grip. That's not going to work so well. Not going to work so well. However, look at, look at these nice nifty lines that we can do. Let's do some over here on this right. Look at that nice long flowing lines. How many times have I had to go back and get more paint? I'm still painting here. I'm still painting. I can still paint some more. This is what the dinky little spotter brushes will not let you do. This brush not terribly expensive. I think it's just maybe three dollars or so on Dick Blick. Now of course that is a discount site. But look at this. I'm still going. I could probably still keep going here for another, for several more minutes. Look at this. I can 
but just like we did the green over here I'd start to pop some of that over here too steel painting same brush I don't know it's too bad I didn't look at the timestamp to see how long we can paint with the same brush with the same amount just that one spot of paint in it that we grabbed from our palette a while ago but we'll just keep on painting here same brush just imagine if you could do that well you can you just need to start thinking about liner brushes they're sort of like the craft brush of fine brushes they do so many different things you can see how we're starting to get to this pretty rapidly here oh let me see so what brand is it it is actually it's Windsor Newton and it's their Cotman brand so and again that's that same little mix of the fluorescent yellow and the green and on Dick Blick, this brush could be as it could be yours for as little as I'm gonna say maybe between 275 and yeah something like that maybe 275 and 315 it, it kind of depends I guess also on sales tax and that sort of thing but, but look at this I can do these fine little dots here just it's the same thing that we were doing on this side of his face here, let's let's not forget our faded ultramarine because we don't want to displease faded ultramarine that's never a good plan as Nessie knows uh, as the RN told us about from, for home already oh tell me like a laxative I'm just looking uh oh Who enters my domain? Does Gridlux, Gridluxus enters the domain? Well, it's the domain of dragons tonight. And we'll just, we'll welcome in the raiders. We got Metal CNC Works and Gamotron and Ivanotep. Hey, welcome back. I do believe you have been here a few times before. We are working on a, this is a Blackheart Models bus. This is from Ga Reign of <laughs> almost a Game of Thrones it's from Reign of Fire so what we've what I'm showing here is this was our kind of initial stuff that we did oh two ish hours ago and then we've got what we've developed here with greens purples different fluorescent paints again our object source lighting boy that's there there's your hype train a prune juice surprise well, maybe that's what faded ultramarine is. Maybe that's why it's so powerful because it's made from prune juice. I mean, pigments have been made from weirder things, I'm sure. Maybe that that's its power. That's where it comes from. But welcome, raiders. Oh, it is oh, thank you very much. Mallet TNC works. I appreciate it. Now this dragon it is very different than the Drogon but in terms of texture wise actually the colors of the dragon are kind of similar to his but what we've superimposed is obviously all the object source lighting on this side so we're just working again with our purples and greens in this area because we want to have something that contrasts with all of the super intense fluorescent reds and yellows and everything else and as we've mentioned several times green and purple together they make gray which is handy because a gray is also going to be a nice little contrast from all of again all of the intensity of these reds and oranges that are down here but there's a lot of, see all this this dot texture right here it's like a freaking dot matrix printer well the other dragon that was a different type of scaling though. so here we got to develop this see what we developed there all of this stuff now has to be developed the same way now it's going to be a little bit different obviously look at look at what this does here just these couple of 
faded ultramarine spots here. Why? Because the red light's not necessarily going to be reaching that or object source lighting. But that's really fun to have. It look just like what we've got here. Very similar idea. Now we're just taking it and transposing it to this side. But then we can still glaze. We've got our purples and greens here. Boom. Like so. Uh, let's see. So what if you ate ghost peppers and washed it down with a big glass of prune juice? You'd be making it you'd be making it rain. That's for sure. You would definitely be making it rain. It would be raining somewhere, that's for sure. Now let's go back in. We can tone down some of our lighter colors. Again, that's the magic of this brush. It does so many different things. That's our again our purple and green together to make a gray, but not a dead gray. It's a gray that has a little bit of life to it. Now let's see. We want to get a little bit more of our touch more of our fluorescent greenish yellow here. Hello, little hobbit. Spark my ganja. Well, Gandalf does welcome you, Mallet CNC Works. We are sparking his ganja with quite a bit of flame here. Look at that. Just to see the same little chain of lights like what we added over here. That's going to start to work its way in in the form of these little scaly dots here. Then we've got, again, we're going back into our clear and liner paints here with a touch of that purple in it. Now let's, let's get our eyes sketched in here. like you do and then we have to see okay we've got that it should be a little bit forward of the halfway point let's give him his little dragony V right there as you do let's give this some right above that there I think we did the see yep, we did the same thing on the other side oh that's ooh, that is a Nurgle recipe yeah you don't want to sneeze in that oh you swallow scrabble tiles you could spell disaster that's uh talk about a message in a bottle uh oh eeny meenies yeah, sorry that you don't get the little graphic of it. I guess that still has to be approved. So hopefully, because this is like the fifth set of things, maybe it takes less time to get approved. But speaking of following, go follow Eeny Meenies because she's very cool. She does lots of fun painting stuff. And check out her base on the Kingdom Death. Oh gosh, what, what's that big old bee called? But it is a very ingenious base. Speaking of... You know, Basically, elevating your basing game, that is definitely the way to do something like that. So go give any Mini a follow. She can also do a a self-shout-out. We've been doing that all night tonight. Because still haven't done quite the official moderator thing yet. At some point, we'll do that. At, I promise, at some point, there will be official moderators. Now that I've got my smallest of brushes here, let us see if we can't you know, add some of these little extra do thingies here into his eye. Like, oh, just right there. That's a bit more there. And then poof. So there you go. We've got the little highlight going on the eye. Oh, Tavistian. Oh, the Titan B. Okay. Thank you for the... Thank you for the reminder. I knew it was a B. Well, and especially with Eeny Meeny's genius of the base, there's no doubt about what it is. Standing atop that massive honey hive there. 
Now have we sufficient? See, now we're going to go back and we'll work in some of our darks there. We're going to now get some of our clear red and purple. Going to get some definition on these guys. We're still going to also do some lighter effects on those too. But for right now, we are going to sort of restore some texture that kind of got lost in the quest to position all of our darks. Just like we brought in all this texture over here. That's Oh, and we got a zesty taco. Thanks, Eni. I appreciate that. This uh, I've been saving this quite literally for months. I was going to do it on a YouTube Live. But I'm really glad I saved it now because I get to do it in a much more fun place. And that would be Twitch with all of you guys, which is great. So I just want to say thanks again to everybody that is joining in on this. It's so much more fun to paint these things with you guys around than just me. <laughs> all the voices in my head telling me to do stuff. I get to be the voice in your head telling you to do stuff. Yeah, that's that. I like that better. That is way better. That is way more fun. So we're adding in our dark here, like you do. And then we're going to go back in with our light, just like we did over here in this part. Is cosplaying kitten in the house? Speaking of dragons and people to follow, also follow Cosplaying Kitten because you get miniature painting, especially Tyranids. Speaking of things with wings, but then you also get you also get some fine 2D or well com computer art 2D. So definitely give Cosplaying Kitten a follow too. You can do your you can do a self shout out if you want because well we just been doing that tonight because we don't got our hand full of dragon right here having some fun with the object source lighting because well <laughs> it's me and there's got to be object source lighting at some point resistance is futile there must be object source lighting now, how much? Yeah, yep. Yeah, I gotta get some of this over here. Uh, let's see. Self shouts. <laughs> well, basically, you do your own. What is that? The exclamation point so and shout yourself out because my hands are a wee bit too full for typing such things. Uh, let's see. Well, yeah, I am also uh, <laughs> Draconic Visions. That that's I didn't realize what shoutouts were until I kept hearing people mention them in their streams, and I went, "What's a shoutout?" <laughs> so yes, I have had to learn all of this stuff on the fly, quite literally, because I started when the heck did I? I think April. Well, I started. Streaming back in February, but my first real, true, honest-to-goodness stream was April 13th. I always think of that as my first official stream. So again, we're starting to get some of this texture into here. Oh, let's see. I think I need to enable the command for an SO to work. Yeah, we can learn to. That's for sure. Well, I know there's there's the whole you set up the chat bot so that it kind of automatically does that, but I do believe you have to set up like another Twitch account or whatever, and then that second Twitch account sort of acts like your own sort of typist. <laughs> All right, I'll go back to our. Get some more of this brighter, you know, and just a couple of spots here, especially along the bottom part of this jaw. 
And I notice this just has more of the little, this was a more, and this happens a lot on some of the like our models dragons is they got different the faces are different on each side which is totally understandable it should be it shouldn't just be a mirrored sculpt but as i'm thinking of it yeah i want to get a couple of these because I, I see it here on these little ridges that i want to do i thought oh, i'll hit it on the other side while i'm still thinking about it oh let's get some of this yellow in here uh, I need a second twitch for the char butt depending on which bot you use yeah there's a it, it's so funny because I'll keep hearing people they they start yelling at the bot because the bot refuses to work and I guess that tends to happen when either Streamlabs or whatever does an update that tends to nuke people's chat bots or something or at least kicks them in a sensitive area and makes no them stop working. No oh, thank you, Palos Hep Hep. It is appreciated here. Let's have, let's have what Palius. He's waiting for the stuff. He's going to drink out of his pyramid glass right there, and then he gets chased away by the dragon. And the dragon says, "That's mine. I'll just, I'll spit some fire on you." That is one. Trixie Dragon right there. You can see it didn't take very long to get all kinds of nifty little texture developed in here, just like over here. Now this side, we were just sort of finding our way. I also want to get some more of that green going in here. We, had, we did some of the lighter stuff. Now let's do a little bit more. Here we go. There we go. Look at that nice juicy fluorescent green that we made. Oh, Gridlog, ask am I on Discord? I don't have my own Discord server. I think that's how it is phrased. Since I do so much stuff on, well, on Facebook and everything else, and even on Instagram, I don't know if I would be able to keep up with also a Discord thing. Now, that could definitely change. I'll, I still want to make a, a, a server slash channel for myself. I think that would probably also help for potential multi-streams in the future, right? And I know that Drax also, he has folks that, well, I know I've joined in on his streams, just kind of talking in the background. It's basically me just finding my way through all this kind of stuff because it's all, it's really, really new really technically been at this about six weeks or so and none of this is at all part of you the youtube live experience or youtube in general so eventually <laughs> eventually i'll get this figured out i'm i've been kind of asking around trying to do my own research and stuff Uh, let's see. Oh well, thanks, thanks, cosplaying kitten. It's it's sort of like with uh, well, just Streamlabs, because I used XSplit for years, and I loved it, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> for whatever reason, not long after I got the paid version of it, it stopped working for Twitch. It would not work. I could not get it to work with Twitch at all, which was. Uh, kind of important to have so then after struggling with Streamlabs Kathy just sort of sat me down and there was this there was a revelation moment and then I was able to figure that out and then there was then there was the emoticons that I didn't know existed until people said where are your emotes I'm like what the heck is an emote so yeah if I if someone brings something up and I go what the heck is that that it's just because I'm like, huh? What is this thing that I've never heard of before? Just like the channel points. I had no clue those existed until maybe five days. No, eh, about eight or nine days ago. Yeah, the text Jeff just keeps... Uh... Well, and I'm sure... 
with whatever new, because I guess there is a new version of Streamlabs or to, some, something is changing, just like YouTube changes everything. Around about the time you get used to it, that's when it's time to blow it up now. It's like we did over here on the other side. So now that we've, I'm just going to let some of this set a little bit here because we've started to mirror our other side. Let's get some of our purples in here. How's about, yeah, look at that. And by purple, I mean our lovely faded ultramarine. Look at that. I still have to make an oil color for this. Basically, the faded ultramarine of oils. There we go. I'm sure Michelangelo must have used it. Actually, probably Michelangelo really couldn't paint at all. It was just the faded ultramarine that painted the Sistine Chapel. And who knows, it's so powerful, it might have even carved the Pieta. I mean, it might have done that too. You can't put anything past the power of faded ultramarine, except we're going to make it, we're going to alter it a bit here with the touch of the clear purple. There we go. Again, purple and green together make you a gray. What was it? Was it Melico? Whatever the big, gigantic, five-headed reaper thing is, that's pretty much how I painted that entire thing. That gigantic reaper bones, five-headed dragon. I was painted with various purples and greens, and it kind of and it had the object source lighting on the bottom, obviously, because he had a big old lava base that he was standing on. Let's bring out some of this texture again, too, on these ridges. Because ruffles have ridges, which now makes me want potato chips and salsa. And chocolate chip cookies. And peanut butter cookies. There we go. Let's, let's see how this, when we flip this over... Yeah, so two sides of the same dragon coin. Mal Maldracar, okay. I knew there was a Mal in there, and I knew there was a Rakar of some kind. I just, I'm never good with miniature names. Yes, it, <laughs> if you are the owner of a miniature company and you want me to paint your miniatures for you, it's best not to give them any name other than like figure number one and archer number two because I am prone to give them my own names. And those names are sometimes based on how, let's say, easy or painful they are to put together. So more than once, a miniature company has gotten a picture file with a very colorful name. And they wonder why, and I said, that's because it was a pain in the, well, insert body part here. No pun intended. Aha, uh -huh. I must do that over here too. That is some of that, the pro acryl. Some of the pale yellow, just because I want it to be, to have it that, that coverage there. Again, looking for... This brings you your detail or your attention to the eyes, even though you got all of this flamey stuff going on. Attention still goes to the eye. Now let's do. We haven't done this in a while. Let's do our black and white thing here. Let's go with some black and white by going zoink with the color. So everywhere we, yeah, you can see there's some some lighting there. But you take away the color, you don't see. Now, as we bring it back, and you really start to see some of that juicy orange in there. Ah, oh, Malal Drakkar, that's the one that you just painted. Although I went all Sergeant Pepper. It was definitely colorful. That, oh, that's it. The, the team, I just call him the, the five-headed dude. That's like the most original name for a Reaper Dragon ever, the five-headed dude. I'm 
going to, yeah, let's do this. Let's get some, some more nifty little highlights here. On his chinny chin chin, because it should be there. It's the surface that's closest to where the fire would be, anyways. Oh, clear yellow, fluorescent yellow. Bam! Look at that. So again, it's not, it's not covering it necessarily, which is good. If I had added white to that, there's no white added to this. That's just how potent. That is just how potent that fluorescent can be. It's completely, very much transparent. There's no white added to it, but yet look at what that covers. I'm gonna get myself a couple more dots down here. I've got them upside down. Aha! That's better. Now, what we did along here, we'll do this way too. That's going to be our clear red and our fluorescent orange. And now we're going to texturize. There's so much texture here. Plenty of texture. Then as we get a little more of our just the orange, less of the clear red, and now uh, just pick out a couple of that. I, I talk about this with chain mail a lot too. You don't hit every single one equally. You just pick out a few. A little can go a long way. I think I yeah I need to get some of these some of these fins here too, and not the anti-Russian fins. Uh, let's see. Oh, uh, which plant or it is? Yeah, I'll show you those in a second. Here, I'm just gonna drop in the last of these little lights here. It is the golden acrylics. I think it's called heavy something. We'll we'll look at the jars in a second. Let's go walk this up a little further here. Oh, what does it say? It says uh, orange fluorescent, ah, heavy, high flow acrylics. There we go. High flow acrylics. That was the orange. There's the yellow, but there's also uh, green, blue, and magenta. So, uh, yeah, we usually kind of get all five because the fluorescents aren't just about. Well, they're great for doing the object source lighting like this. If you see some of my YouTube videos, and well, and folks on the Patreon page, they certainly know that I love to mix in, especially things like the magenta and the yellow, into my golds. So when I'm doing gold, non-metallic, like we did, here's a couple of here. So this was actually a recent stream right here. So Jamie here, we used some of the fluorescent yellow into that and we certainly used a lot of fluorescent yellow here on some of our cipher lords the fluorescent green you can see it right there so the fluorescents can just like I said they can do a whole bunch of things here's and this is actually my very first army painting series so you can see we got fluorescent green in the base we've got our glowing familiar or whatever that's supposed to be balanced against what some purple yes indeed now, while I'm thinking about it, I'm going to get into some of this. See what we can do here for some stone texture. Like you do. There's no white in this at all. This is just that fluorescent orange. It is, it's got that much strength to it with no white or any kind of stuff like that added to it. Look how it covers, but it's freaking translucent. It's pretty amazing what it can do. 
But I, I do suggest for those of you that are coming into this a little bit later, you definitely want to, I think, go back and, and check this out from the beginning. See how it started, to see how this all developed here. It will eventually end up on YouTube. I, just, I basically take the raw footage, kind of remaster it. I add photos to it so you can kind of see what's going on. The photo of the, the materials that were used. So we can see, look at what this is starting to do here. Look what that it starts to now tie into our our dragon there. And if I add more of the fluorescent yellow to that. Starts to bring out some of our stone texture. Starts to make sense why he's got all the nice glowy stuff on his chin there. Oh, let me see what we got. Oh, st oh stuck in Florida. See, I've seen those in the craft stores. Oh, well, I was I had to be convinced because I was convinced they wouldn't work. I did not think they would work at all. And then eventually, <laughs> a very good friend just kept pushing me to try to just try the darn thing, see what happens. Have you tried them yet? Have you tried them yet? And then I tried them, and I went, oh, my goodness. This is, like, the greatest stuff ever. So, yes, indeed. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, let's see. I'm looking here. Oh, Armored, armored Wolf. Yes, that is... Uh, and once again, I, we mentioned this early on, go check out Armored Wolf for dice bags. Yes, indeed. Because, well, we're starting to combine two, or I'm, or I'm painting some custom dice bags, some nice oil painting stuff on the dice bags, too. But they don't really need me, because there's fantastic metal work. There's teeth added to the orky bags, and some marvelous painting and blood effects and verdigree effects and you would swear that the leather was actually metal so definitely check out the armored wolf etsy page because well i think some of you have seen kathy's nurgle dice bag on her broadcast so yeah look at what that does now there we go uh, tell me what, they were oh, selling them for 70%. See, now this is the interesting thing. The very first fluorescents I ever got were many years ago. FRP Games, it was a discount site. They had the, what are they, the, the Vallejo fluorescents on clearance. They were 89 cents a jar. And just to amuse myself, I got them. I thought, oh, I'll never use these, but I'll get them and just whatever. Who'd have thought that they would become the core of not just all my object source lighting stuff, but so much in the way of non-metallic metals. So I use those like crazy for so many things. All right, let's do that on this side now, too. Uh, let's see. Attempt to get out cosplaying. Oh, she is. She has declared herself for Gondor. Or Gondor, let's see. Yes, yes, definitely throw a link to the Etsy page into the chat here. Oh, do we do we have a ah we have him in the house? Decho, how are you doing? I know I always tend to see you at other people's chats and stuff. Now I get to actually actually talk to you instead of just Throwing you a, hey, how's it going? I know that's not terribly original. Oh, let's see. Uh, yeah, that was uh, Skycam. I just rec I sent her, well, obviously my Amazon link doesn't do her much good down there in Australia. But th that uh, the Windsor Newton set of 10, you can't go wrong with that as a start. You cannot go wrong with that as a place to begin. But like I said, uh, for sure on Saturday, that's supposed to be another one of those kind of epic long streams. And the idea is to have the oils going. 
I do believe there will be some brown matter alizarin that's going to make its way out onto the palette for sure. And you can see what this, look at how much paint this thing can hold. Look at the abuse that it can take. Yes, it's a synthetic. So say we all. So say we all. We got Snickernack, Snickernack. Well, I think we already said to follow them, but we've got to have, we have our little fun times here. The spell brush goes to eat some of those things and then gets chased away by the dragon. I cannot confirm nor deny we'll have other comedy shows like that. All, I guess it all kind of depends on what we're painting. But I do have... Actually, here, I'll show you something that was painted in oils. i got to let this uh, dry for a second here. So while that dries, where did you go? Aha, you are over here. So this was painted on a previous stream in oils. And especially back there, see all that blending? That was just a matter of slapping down some colors and then just pushing those around and getting those all blended together. And it just took no time at all. Now I do want to show, aha, so object source lighting, this is uh, something that I did for, again, for the Patreon page. So this is using metal medium, but this is true metallic metals. Yes, with object source lighting, we did that. Oh, we have Bubble Snot in the house. How are you doing? And Moe's Magic, hello. How are you doing, Moe's Magic? I'm sure I will probably, I don't know, see in Drax's stream if Drax does win that or uh, Jinxed. I'll probably see in somebody's stream tonight. I'll be filming more tutorials probably, though. Well, depending on how much of my voice is left, I guess. Now, we're going to go back into our here. I'll get some of our yellow and orange together. I'm just, uh, oh, is there a charity in the house? I just, I just had to look. Just had to look real quick. There, look at this. I'm using the brush on its side here. I can use the brush point. I can do so many different things with that same very durable synthetic Windsor Newton Cotman. So again, I'm just gonna. Well, I can even bring some of this up here. Some of it up into here. You can see how just how light that is. Just how light that happens to be. And remember, we hadn't touched this thing down here since the beginning. We had barely touched that at all. Let's do some more here. I don't want to get too involved with that because we want to make sure that we have all of our object source lighting set up here too. Here, let's get some... I want to get a couple of these. There we go. Don't want it to be yellow. I want it to be more orange. Again, we're just doing some dots here. So a Lady B miniatures gets to, now who knows, maybe at some point if I have the, what is that, the Delgado stream deck or something, I can press a little button and maybe a little Sweet Home Chicago plays, maybe a few seconds of it. That is all in the future though. Actually, I would really like to have the stream deck for doing battle reports, like live battle reports, being able to switch the camera. It would probably be handy if Kathy and I want to do our evening with the Wapples multi-stream or joint stream too. That could be handy. Yeah, let's do some of our, yeah, let's get some of this orange down in here too, breaking up some of these things into we got all the dots going up here. I want to have a few of those here, even though we got lots of ridges down here, like ruffles. Oh, thanks, Cosplaying Kitten. I appreciate that. 
actually now now I keep thinking of uh, the nids with all of their carapace and everything all of those real super textured surfaces those could be pretty darn fun in some objects towards lighting and some not just fiery stuff but uh, like conduit glows or something I used to I had a whole imperial fist army with a lot of conduit glowing stuff that nice green going on oh and lady b does uh yeah it was it's something that we well we were gonna do it on youtube because i wasn't doing the, the twitch thing but now that we're both doing the twitch thing so that could be a very fun thing for us to do it it would just be kind of a mellow sort of thing right and we might maybe we're just uh, sculpting some stuff or sculpting some bases or whatever and then that way <laughs> we can torment each other and that way we can have some of our we can have some of our ugly dolls join us too yeah okay oh yes I've totally forgotten. So what we did, we did that all along here. We got to do that here too. Jeez Louise, how did I not see that? This is why you got to be working on the whole thing at all time, not just one little parts of it, because you will have the issue of forgetting something. It will happen. Yeah, let's march this up a little ways. Yeah, and then we'll do our little thing here with the clear red touch of the fluorescent orange now armor wolf has some bugs yeah I, I just uh now I'm also starting to think to the 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 deep kin there has to be almost I don't want to say like they're glowing but that would be neat to have some kind of uh, using the that fluorescent blue to give him some kind of iridescent I'm, I'm just in that back of my mind i'm starting to play around with uh not not sort of the james cameron expedition to the titanic where you've got those bright arc lights pointing at a ship that's on the bottom of the ocean but some way to have some kind of eerie blue green glow on them something like that you know what? I, I'm going to actually take some of that fluorescent yellow, combine it with that. Let's see if we can't get ourselves some bright stuff happening on the teeth here. Yeah, that needed this. So do these guys here. 